Mm -hmm. Hello? We're, we're working on the, getting everyone's video started. Okay. Thanks, Doug. All right, Betty Ann. At the end, did you see the request from Christy to make her a participant or a host, whatever the appropriate term is? Yes, we're, we're working on getting everyone uh, properly logged in right now. Okay. Here we go. Can everyone hear me and see me? Yes, yes. see you. Okay. We just need our videos turned on. Working on it. Got it. Can hear me and see me? Yes, yes. see you. I can hear. And everyone should I, everyone should be able to turn on their own video. You're all promoted to panelists. Nope, it says we can't. You cannot start your video because the host has stopped it. Right. Hmm. Okay. Apologies. Trying to figure it out. One moment. That should work. Everyone should be able to turn on their own video. Good. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I'm B team tonight, so you got to give me a little, uh, a little slack. But I hope that's okay. Hi, Robin. Hello. I like your red walls, Doug. You like that? That's, like that's raspberry pudding. <laughs> I don't. Um, Betty Ann. Yes, you sir. See that, you see that picture I'm pointing to up there? Can you see it? So I see two pictures behind you. Right. Yeah. One is Louise at the um, sitting in the Coliseum in Rome. The other one is my granddaughter with a Dallas cowboy hat on. <laughs> Love my boys. There you go. <laughs> um, it looks like Michael said, Michael Hartman said that he can't get on. And then Meg sent a message saying she's here, but she doesn't have a video option. Do we lose Nina? No, I'm here. Oh, okay. okay. Hold on. I'm getting, giving Michael Hartman. All right. Now it looks good. I, something happened and I got refreshed. I'm refreshed. You look good to be refreshed before the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> like the weather was a little better today. <laughs> hey, every, every, we, we have to be happy about every little um, degree that's lower. Yes, <laughs> I agree. 
everyone could see on the screen, we have Mr. Long. He's the new director of planning for the village. Oh, okay. Hi there. Hello. Nice Hello. to meet you. Yes, you too. So the next meeting will be you. You'll be running it? Yes, I'll be running your next meeting. Yep. Okay. <laughs> This may be a little premature, Robin. Yeah. And Abby and, and Meg. Um, I read that thing on Bricksmore. Have you taken a look at it at all? I did not. Okay, because. Um, I mean, I did. Oh, that's. Yes, yeah, sorry, I forgot. Yes, I did take a look at it. But we're not the people, and she's not. If they're not complying with the um, approvals, then it's up to the village. Building inspector, we can't do anything. We've given no. her the, we've given them the the special permit. No, I I, I understand and I agree, um, but I did ask Betty Ann for a copy of, of North Shore's resolution with respects to deliveries, um, and I will send photographs to Betty Ann tomorrow for distribution. Uh, I happen to be there at about I guess it was around eleven eleven thirty. They had the access road in the parking lot in front of between CVS and North Shore, totally blocked with delivery vehicles. The loading dock was totally full with delivery vehicles. And in two of the parking spaces, there was a delivery truck. This, so just so you remember, Doug, this is not an agenda item. No, I understand. I'm, I'm going to send you photos for distribution. I now, think it's really up. I think you need to make sure that you send them to the village inspect the building inspector as well. Okay. No, so I will, that he I will, can I, take I the appropriate action. Yeah. No, I will send them out for distribution. Um, because, you know, I, I think that um, I did find some concerns with some of the items. So I will send those out, but just FYI, I read, I read the North Shore um, resolution and there wasn't anything said about deliveries as to what time and place they were to take to occur. So it's just a, you know, just a comment and an observation that I made, but I will send those out and uh, Betty Ann can distribute them to everyone. Okay, so we ready? Everybody ready? Greta, you're there. Okay, sorry, you're so little in the space. I almost didn't see you down there. Um, all right, so let's begin. Welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting of July 23rd, 2020. And before we begin the agenda, I would first like to thank Betty Ann for her many years of service to the village. She is leaving and moving to a Moving away, let's say that. I don't want to characterize the place you're moving to. Thank um, you. And so, you know, she will be a great loss to the boards and to the village, and we really want to thank her. Oh, thank Absolutely. you very much, Chair. Betty Ann, thank you for everything and wish you best of luck where you're going. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. As I said in my email, Betty Ann, you are outstanding. Thank and, you, Louise, and Louise and I will miss you terribly. Oh, thank you. Okay, so now the, um, let's open the public hearings. The first item is um, an application oh, by Madam Moderate. Chair. Madam Sorry. Chair, just before you begin, would you like to take a roll call? Do we establish a quorum? Fine, sure, we'll take a roll call. I'm one. Abby, are you here? I'm here. Meg? Here. Doug? Here. Greta? Here. Okay, so we have a quorum. Um, so beginning, so we're going to the first application is um, an application is an app is a request for an extension of time to file the special permit renewal application. Because when we granted the special permit for the outdoor space, we put a time limit that said they had to apply four months before and they did not apply four months before. So um, we need to give them the right to apply at this point. So that is what the request is 
for, they will apply for a renewal of the special permit at the, I understand, I believe they will be applying for a renewal of the special permit at the next meeting. Okay, is the applicant here? Yes, that's Anthony Russo. Right. But is... We can unmute him. Yeah, you should unmute him if, if it's us that are stopping him. We're working from right. being audible and visible. Mr. Russo? Oh, okay. Go ahead, Mr. Russo. Uh, we, we don't hear you, so you must be muted on, on your end. Is your, is, is your speaker on, on your computer, if that's what you're speaking through? We do not hear you. Anyone have any suggestions for Mr. Russo? Perhaps he could also call in on his phone so we could see him on the screen here, but maybe he could join the meeting also on his phone and speak that way. It's a good idea. Mr. Russo, did you hear what, what um, Ms. Jurgen suggested? Call in on the number because we can't hear you through the speaker of your computer, I assume. Um, and so if you, Stay visible on the computer and call in on your phone. We'll be able to hear and see you. Mr. Ruzzo, can you hear us? Okay, I'm going to read you the phone number. Ready? 1-646-2000. He said one second. One second. Okay. He said, you can read the number. Okay, We don't hear you. Did you call? Are you on your phone? We don't hear you. Robin, can you hear me? Robin? Frank, Frank, I can hear you. Yeah, I, I can't get video. It still says that the host has blocked it. So I can hear everybody. I hope you can hear me, but I can't get video. Mm -hmm. Did you call that number, Mr. Russo? Put it up. We're not hearing you. Does the number, when he called in, does that have to now be opened up to be able to join the meeting? Does it have to be given some rights? No, it should work just fine. You can't call in either, wow. Is he, he 
There's a 914-760-3234. Could that be him? Yeah, he said that's him. So he's under an attendee. So can you make him a panelist? Uh -huh. Sure. Oh. I don't know why my... Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, yes. we can. Hear you. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. I don't know if it's my computer. I'm, I, I've been on many Zoom calls, so I'm not 100% sure. I, I am not technologically advanced, so. Well, just proceed with your application, please. Okay. Um, okay, so I don't know. Uh, is it my turn to speak? Yes. Now, it's, okay. it's your turn. You're the applicant. Tell us what you're here for. Okay, so I'm here for an extension of my current special permit. Um, obviously, the time had elapsed. I, I knew I had to apply four months before, but in my mind, I was thinking before outdoor dining, not before the end of the permit. And when the months came before outdoor dining, we were in COVID, and I, you know, I just dropped the ball at that point because we were focused, you know, we had closed the restaurant and we were focused on other things. But I do have my application in and, um, you know, I fully intend to be at the September meeting. So this is just an application to allow him to make that application really, um, because that's not what our special permit said. It's the request for the extension of time to file. Anybody on the, um, does anybody in the poll have the, from the public wish to make, say anything about this? But well, before we go there, does anybody on the board have any questions for Mr. Russo? No. Okay, uh, is anybody from the public wish to speak? Use the raise your hand if you'd like to try to speak. Anybody, Betty Ann? No hands are raised. Okay, so um, I think that's it. I guess we, no one else wishes to speak. We would close the public hearing on this. Uh, now this is just the extension of time. Right. It is not the grant of this renewal. I'll right. ask. I'll ask one question, but I think I think I know the answer already. Have you received any complaints about your outdoor dining bill? I guess you haven't been really been able to set up too much, so perhaps I don't know how much you've been per, we, you've been able to operate. But have you received any complaints from neighbors or the police? We have not received any complaints. Um, I tried to get a form from the police department, but they said they were gonna send it directly, that we haven't had any complaints against us. That's actually part of the application package that should have been in the Google Drive. Thank you, Betty. Okay, um, anybody wanna make a motion to close the hearing on the extension of time to file an application? I'll make the motion to close. All right. Second. Second. Abby, did you just second? second. Yes. So okay. Someone else so, did too. Uh, fine. Um, okay. Uh, on the on the uh, on the closure of the public hearing, Doug. Yes. Greta. Meg. Yes. yes. Abby. Yes. And I vote yes and as I well. Okay. Well, the public hearing public is closed. We will get to this tonight in our closed applications to decide whether to extend. So um, we will, we'll do it tonight. We'll vote on it tonight. Okay, thank you all so very much. Okay. The next application is 1SP 2014 Hampshire Club renewal of their special permit for non-member events. Uh, hey, Robin, I have to recuse myself on this, just a reminder, so. Okay, thank you. Should so I, I guess, uh, How do we, actually, you did this last time, I forget. What did we do to recuse? I think you turn off the, you, you unmake right. her a participant. Okay, I wanted to make a short statement on my recusal, just to be very clear to everyone why I'm recusing. 
So for the record, I am recusing on the Hampshire matter because I own a property that borders, um, whose entire length borders um, on top of Hampshire and um, has all year round views of Hampshire. And as a result, I do have a uh, material financial stake in Hampshire as expressed to us over the years by brokers, by property listings and by appraisals. So I just wanted to be very clear about that. All right, thank you, Abby. So if you would take her off as a participant for this application, please. Um, Ashley? Uh -huh. Nina. Mm -hmm. Nina's driving tonight. Oh, yes, Nina, right. Well, we normally, it's, it's up to you, but we normally just turn their screens off and their sound, so I don't Okay, know. so do that. That way she doesn't have to worry about. Okay, so just do that, please. Okay. Um, all right, is the applicant here? Is that you, Mr. Pfeffer? No, uh, Mr. Cooper. Cooper. Yes. Okay. Well, there's somebody else down here. That's why I didn't know who it was. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. can, um, can you hear me? Okay. Sometimes my sound is... Okay, good. Thank you. <clears throat> good evening. Uh, just for the record, my name is David Cooper. I'm a partner with the law firm of Zarin and Steinmetz, here representing Hampshire Club, Inc., the applicant. Uh, we're here tonight to, on an application to renew the uh, special permit to conduct non-member events at the club. Um, just with me uh, tonight, along with Mr. Pfeffer, uh, Dave Smith, the general manager of the club, um, and Dorothy Mar Maruzis, who's the assistant general manager of the club as well. Um, Betty Ann, before I start, uh, uh, good seeing you, and, and I just learned, listening to this, that you're leaving. So, so. Uh, Good luck, and uh, I, I will miss you on Wednesdays and, and, and every other night. <laughs> I seem to be in Maranek a lot this year. So anyway, thank you. Just by way of background quickly, members of the board, um, the board issued a special permit to Hampshire in 2014 to conduct non-member events pursuant to your, uh, your village code. Um, the board subsequently uh, renewed the special permit in 2017. Uh, your code, as well as the special permit that was originally issued in 2014, uh, re uh, requires us to come back every three years for renewal. So tonight we're here for another renewal standard pursuant to the, to the code and, and your uh, special permit. Um, I did submit a, a cover letter, but just to summarize the, the legal standard governing all renewal applications uh, is that in the absence of a material change in conditions or evidence of a violation of the permit's terms, uh, the renewal should be granted. Um, in this case, there have been no material changes in conditions uh, since the, the initial issuance of the permit or the renewal in 2017. The operation has not changed. It's the same operation using the same club facilities. Um, we also submitted evidence uh, ahead of this meeting to your board demonstrating uh, compliance with the terms of the permit uh, with respect to a list of non-member events uh, your code uh, sets a threshold of 20 percent uh, or no more than uh, uh, 20 percent of the events can be non-member events. Um, in past years you've required Hampshire as well as I believe other clubs to provide uh, uh, some showing of evidence. Um, for us we have provided a spreadsheet uh, each each time we've been before this board and that's been accepted as, as uh, uh, acceptable evidence and, and, and correct evidence so we've submitted a, another one uh, to your board. Uh, and that does show that each year uh, uh, leading up to this renewal, the uh, uh, number of non-member events has been uh, under the 20% cap. In addition, I understand that the police department did report back to Betty Ann and, and the department that the building department that no complaints had been filed over the past three years. Um, and Hampshire has not received any notices of violation or, or anything else from the building department uh, with respect to their non-member event operations. And finally, the requirement that uh, 990 forms be provided to the uh, village each year. Uh, each year, I, we've uh, emailed to the clerk treasurer the 990 forms. They are in, in the village's files. Um, so uh, just in, in, in sum, the, the record before you is, is substantially the same record that was before you back in 2014 and 2017, first when the, the permit was issued and when the permit was, re was renewed. So we respectfully submit that based on the record before you and your precedent in, in uh, uh, interpreting and dealing with the non-member event uh, uh, special permit, 
Uh, the record does support in this case another renewal of three years. And we would respectfully request uh, that tonight we take that action. Um, we're here to answer any questions you may have, um, but short of that, everything's in, in the record, we believe. Does anybody have any questions for Mr. for the applicant? I have a question. Um, I think it's our precedent to ask applicants that are filing if it's an LLC for their members or if it's an Inc for the board of directors and to get certification for the certification form filled out for the board of directors. And I didn't find that in your application. Do we have the list of who is on your board of directors for the corporation? I don't believe that that's a, that's a requirement uh, for a special permit application um, or certainly not for, for renewal. It's not in, in your list, so it wouldn't be in the, in the packet that was submitted. It's in the initial application, but not in the renewal application. As a requirement, it's only in the initial application. Would it be something you could provide for us? Um, it, can be, it can be provided, but it's certainly not a requirement to issue the special, the, renew the special permit. Um, I, um, my this is some, an aside to the board members, we need to revise when we have a, a, a shorter agenda, we need to go back to the application and we need to revise the application for a renewal, which is much too bare bones. So um, we need to spend some time and, and um, to do all this. I'm just letting you know that we have to do this. And if the next few meetings are going to be, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, but if the next couple of meetings are also gonna have long agendas, I propose that maybe we need to have a separate working session just to deal with the applications and the forms that are submitted. So um, that was an aside, but I'm sorry. Given what you were saying, Meg, I mean, it's clearly, this is one of the, the problems with the renewal application. It is. Right. And that's not a requirement of the renewal process, unfortunately. So I guess voluntarily, would you like to provide it and provide certification for the members? For um, is, there, is, is there a reason why, why you're, you're asking for it? I, I don't have a conceptual issue with it. I just want to know for the record why, why that would be a requirement based on the Usually with the applicant, we ask for a certification that tells you what any affiliation you have with anyone in the village or any business they have um, in the village. Um, and also I know that when we've had other member clubs come to us, we are interested to see what members are, if this is being run as a member club or if this is being run in a different way. Well, okay, yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't have, a, have an issue with it and I'll ask the applicant to, to be can provide it. Although what, what I would ask is if the board is gonna go and you act tonight on the renewal, they, they act on it conditioned upon that being, that, uh, that being provided so that it doesn't hold up the, the process. Um, you know that that that's fine. I just don't. I don't want to um, hold it up because we didn't realize we were going to be asked to, to provide that. I don't know if we're going to act or not. I can't tell you if we will. Depend on time and what the other board members want to do. So I don't know that we are, regardless of this issue. Those are all my questions. I have a couple questions. One is um, a David Smith signed the application but didn't indicate his capacity general manager i just i think i, I in the beginning i just i just said that so what what's his, the capacity of david smith general manager of the club okay i'm sorry yep. and then my other question is um looking at the events that you submitted I wonder if you could tell me a little bit more about some of the events, such as Sunday brunch, um, and why you think that qualifies, um, how, that, how that qualifies as an, as an event. Oh, okay. You're, the, question, the question is you're asking, how does Sunday brunch qualify as an event in, in the denominator? Yes. Correct? Okay. Um, just, just by, yes, by way of question. Yeah, okay. By, by way of background, um, I believe in the in the last two um, submissions back in 2014, 2017, that same event was listed as an event, and, and, and your board has accepted it. So, but I know you weren't you weren't sitting on the board at the time, so I'm happy to, to answer the question. Um, so the, the 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 code itself 
defines the denominator of the 20% the threshold as events or activities of the club. Um, and if you look at that, that could be any event or activity of the club, you know, any lunch or any, any, any uh, meal or, or round of golf. Hampshire has never taken that approach. Um, it, it considers only what, what we would define as special events. So in other words, theme parties, holidays, celebrations, um, events that have separate marketing pieces to the members. Come join us for Sunday brunch, for example. Come join us for whatever it may be. Reservations are required for those events. So it's, se it's separate from just showing up to the club and, and having a meal or playing around the golf. You need a reservation. And there's a special menu prepared for that event. Um, and so uh, that, that uh, delineation was used back in 2014 and 2017 and accepted by this board. So we just carried that forward to, to 2020. Well, is it hosted or financially guaranteed by a member, or is it a general event hosted by the club as an entity? It's hosted by, by, by members of the club. Financially, as guaranteed I look at members. financially okay. guaranteed by members, by, members yeah. by specific members of the club? I, I, can't, I can't tell you which specific members of, of the club are, are guaranteeing a specific brunch, but, it's, but it's, a, it's a membership club. It's guaranteed by the members, yes. So you're, you're advising that specific for each of these Sunday brunches, a specific member of the club is, is um, hosting or financially guaranteeing the event? No, no this, is, this is Dan Pfeffer. Sorry, I'm trying to get my video working here, but I'm having that same Zoom issue tonight, I guess, and I apologize. The, each, each of the, and David Smith, our general manager is here as well. Each of the Sunday brunches is an event where people are invited to attend. There's a special menu. Each person that's invited is a member. We do not invite the outside public to go. Each person who makes a reservation for their family or otherwise is responsible for the payment of that bill and they guarantee that they're going to actually make that payment. Um, it's, not, it's not like they're holding a wedding or hosting a wedding, a member's hosting a wedding where a, a member would guarantee that they will be paying their bill for the entire wedding. In this case, they're guaranteeing that they'll be paying their bill for their family members or other people that show up to the particular brunch that David is referencing. Does that make sense? Thank you, Dan, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it, I understand, it's what I thought it sounded like. It just doesn't, um, so it's, it, it sounds like it's a club hosted event as opposed to an event where an individual member is financially liable for it, correct? No, each, each member, each, because it's a membership club and the members that attend, attend you, well, you, and, what I mean is you don't have, you don't have one member financially liable for the entire event. They're just, they're just going to pay their bill. Correct. Um, for their attendance. Mm -hmm. Correct? Correct. Okay. Again, uh, just, just to circle back on that, your board has accepted those as member events before. And so consistent with your interpretation before, we're, it's same, we're saying same thing today. I mean, the, if, if there's a new interpretation that the board is going to, going to uh, apply, um, they need to give the regulated community notice that you're changing the, 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 the method of, uh, of interpretation. So based on your, your precedent and, and, and the way you've interpreted it before, we have put that in, on the list, yes. Okay. You have any other questions, Greta? No. Was that a yes or a no? I'm sorry. 
I, I have no further questions. Oh, okay, sorry. Does anyone else have any questions? All right, does any member of the public wish to speak on this application? There are no raised hands. All right, we'll give it another 30 seconds or so. Okay, what do the members of the board want to do? Anybody? I think we should close if no one else has to speak. Um, I was asking for some more information, so I think it's the question of whether you're going to keep it open to get the list of board of directors. Well, we can close the public hearing subject to receipt of that additional information that you requested if that works for you. Works for me. Okay. So moved. Is there a second? I guess that was a motion. I second that was motion. Oh. Okay, so um, it's a motion to close the public hearing subject to receipt of the uh, information that Meg requested regarding the members of the... Which is the board, list of board of directors of the corporation and their certification forms. Okay, uh, Doug? Yes. Meg? Yes. Greta? Yes. And I vote yes as well. This is closed, subject to receipt of, although it'll be open to receipt of that information. Okay. Next application is application 3A2020, Pamela and Alexander Horn, 401 Rushmore, 4A, couple of variances. Are you there, Ms. Uh, applicant? Hi, how are you? We are here. Okay. Do you like to present your application? Tell me, uh, tell us what this is an application for. Sure. And, sure. I, and I believe our architect, Mike McCann, is on as well. Yeah, and, and Mike, maybe you can turn on your video in the bottom left corner if it says uh, start video. You can click on that one and there we go. There we go. <laughs> I think you're on mute as well. Yeah, so then it, um, there yeah. you go. Can you hear me now? Yep. Good, good. Hi, board members. Um, uh, this is Mike McCann. I'm the architect for this uh, project. And what we're trying to do here um, at the Horns residence is expand and get another bedroom, a family room and kind of jigger the garage in order to keep it uh, uh, pretty, pretty normal. But in doing so, having this, um, the lot that we have, which is somewhat abnormal and, and presently the uh, side yard is too small anyway, we, we are requesting a relief from a small part of the side yard, which is already non-conforming. We want to go from, um, let me just look at this plan. The side yard of 11.7 feet to a side yard of 9.5 feet. And I, I, think, I think what I'd like to uh, go through is that what little uh, effect or uh, it would have on the neighborhood. Um, certainly the, uh, it's not gonna change the nature of the uh, character of the neighborhood, it's still a residence, and, uh, and this variance, I don't, it, it's, it's very small, considering that it uh, amounts to, that what we're requesting amounts to um, about 60 square feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello? We're still here. Um, so it's a very small uh, variance to the uh, 
to the north side of the house, it, it ends up as being 0 0.06 percentage of the lot that this, this that the nonconformity that we're, we're, we are requesting. So it will have, we think, a very small effect on, on what we're trying to do and, and the neighborhood and the, and the environment. Um, this condition that we need to request is, uh, I think, due bec to the, uh, the location of the building on the lot. Um, the kind of, it looks like this, this property and the house next to it were part of an original estate and it was kind of, it was uh, subdivided and the configuration of the lot is a little abnormal and which puts us in a position to, to have to squeeze the side yard a little. Um, and I think it will have very little effect on anything. Uh, the neighbor, the immediate neighbor next door has written a letter, I think you have, you know, uh, requesting all your consideration for uh, and approving what we plan on doing. We have a letter also from the neighbor across the street with, for the same, with the same sentiment, you know, just trying to uh, say that, you know, the investment into this area will be helpful. It's, uh, you know, it'd be just uh, people staying there and, and upgrading and, and put, investing in their property. I think that's uh, what we're trying to do. And with your help and a little relief on this uh, side yard, we'll reach our goal. So uh, if there's any particular question that you, yeah, you might I have. have. A, I have a question. I was a little perplexed. So the, because you're saying that you're not changing the rear yard setback, but the structure you're building is bigger than the structure that's there now. So why are you not changing the rear yard setback because the rear yard setback is uh 17.8 feet and we're not changing that but why not you know my question is as a factual matter if you are expanding it including it looks like to the rear how are you not changing the rear yard setback that's what i'm asking as a, so as a I'm because we're not going we're not going to the existing uh rear yard with she, the she's asked i think she's asking why and if I can answer that, we have uh, the way the lot is uh, set up, we're, we're kind of sloped away from Harbor Island Park and can, um, and we have bedrock in the rear yard and we have a retaining wall that's about yeah, That's not my question. Feet. It's not why it's, can I, can I, you have an existing garage that has a certain configuration on the lot. You are building back of the existing garage. You're building toward the rear. No, we're not. No, we're building towards the front uh, and the side. Okay, so the rear of the of the of the existing garage is going to be in the same place as the rear yes. of the new portion of the building. Yes, right. right. That was what I was trying. The to diagonal, the area with the okay. diagonal lines, is the proposed work. It's in it, right? <laughs> okay, I was trying to understand exactly. <laughs> So, this is why we need more room because we have our kids crawling all over us. I'm sorry, this is not very professional. But. It's yeah, okay. The, one of their aims on this is also to get back their dining room, which is now the family room, playroom, and storage room. And that, that the, uh, the new family room will help that a lot. And the configuration that with the design, I think what the, the way I laid out the floor plan is a is the most uh, um, expedient and 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 logical. The family room off the kitchen, the garage off the, uh, you know, um, with the mud room. So, you know, we can't put it somewhere else on this on the lot. This is this is it. The the floor plan of the the existing floor plan of the house pretty much dictates what we're doing. Do you do you have a two car or one car garage now? So it's only one usable space. So the previous owner ate into one of the parking spaces in the garage to create the laundry room. So it's only one usable space. Okay. Anybody else on the board have any questions, please? Um, I just, just quickly, I'm sure this is just a, a miss 
communication, but you said the neighbors across the street, but across the street is Harbor Island, right? So do you mean to the other side? No, well, it's like a paddock corner. So it's kind of, not directly across, but a little to the to the south, I guess. The first house the on first, the, the first house, house the on that side of the park, on that okay. side of the street. Got it, got it. Okay. Got it. Wait, wait, following up, you said one neighbor. Did both neighbors to your sides sign off or only we one have, neighbor? We have two letters of support, one from our immediate neighbor that we would be um, closest to with this expansion, and then across the street, that neighbor also. Uh, and we can contact our other neighbor too. We yeah, we can get the other <laughs> neighbor as well. I'm just wondering. You, so you did. You didn't. They didn't say no. They didn't say yes. You just didn't talk to them. Right. Okay. Right. Right. We've talked to them. We just didn't. They. They didn't write a letter. Okay. Anyone else? Um, I have a couple. I have a couple questions and comments. Um, mm -hmm. One on one concerning the EAF that you completed. I just want to note that number 5B was left blank and number 17 needed an explanation and that was left blank. I, I couldn't so hear I you. Wanna... Um, I'm sorry. Um, on the EAF, number 5B was left blank. And number 17, um, B was marked yes, and it required an explanation, and none was given. Well, just a quick thing. Is this just a quick question? Is this a single family house? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so just, for the, just so, you, so you are aware, with single family homes, they are considered a type two action, and therefore no further secret, is, uh, no further secret investigation, environmental investigation is required. Okay, great. Okay, no further investigation. That's good. Well, that means that basically what that means is that the AF is not necessary. Even if no further, even if no further environmental, which right, we know that it is a type two. That doesn't change the fact that I think Greta is just wanting to make sure that in fact all the information that's supposed to be provided is in fact provided. Fair so, enough. And with that being the case, the EAF is not required when there's a type two action. An EAF is not required. That's correct. Oh, okay. Well, that's a whole, didn't, didn't know that actually. Okay. Because we've been um, getting EAFs all the time. Is, can, it, um, can it be, and uh, this is a question, that while the EAF is not required, um, by state law, we as a committee, uh, as a board, can decide that we want it completed mm. internally, and can we can make it a, a requirement? That's a question for your attorney. I mean, I, if you're asking me, I don't, s I don't really see why you would require it, though. It's a type two action. What, what's the point of it? Well, I'm just asking the question. You know, we've always had them. I, I just, I guess it, it would have to be reasonable, right? And if it's not actually required, and if there's really no use of it, I, I don't see why why it should be provided. I don't, I mean, I didn't know that it wasn't required, but if the board decided that as part of its application going forward, we wanted additional information, and the additional information we wanted was already visible, right? It was already contained within the EAF form. Why would we not be able to do that? And maybe we create that form and we don't call it an EAF. We call it a Fine. additional it's, environmental information form. It just has to be reasonable. All I'm saying is I don't see why you would require it, but if you want that information and it's, it's, it makes sense in terms of other portions of the application, I think it's fine to request it. So then I would say when we go, when we go through the um, application form, we can discuss this and see if there are questions from the EAF that we, we would want to include on our new app, on our revised application form. Does that answer, uh, give you what you need? Will that give you what you want, Greta? Yeah, I mean, I... Okay, then we'll do that in the future. 
Um, so I have um, a slight, you know, not a slight, I have a disagreement with the characterization of it not being a substantial variance. Uh, the, the request to move, um, to propose 9.5 side yard, lesser side yard setback is actually a 37% variance by my math. So that is considered substantial. And given that it's substantial, you know, I think we, at least I, I look at it a little bit more carefully than if it was insubstantial, which um, insubstantial is less than 15%, substantial as I understand it, anything above 15% is substantial, and I, I calculate this to be 37%. So I guess I'd like a little bit more information in terms of, um, I understand this, this is pre-existing, but I, I guess I have a question in terms of the neighborhood. Are there other situations where there were pre-existing side, side yard setbacks that um, were ex granted variances. Looking at the photographs that you provided really doesn't give me guidance on the issue of the um, side yard distances. Um, also, I guess I'm not... Yes. So we, we do know that our neighbor who wrote, one of the neighbors who wrote the letter also, uh, I believe, presented before you um, the Heises, Laura, Robert and Laura Heiss, uh, requesting a side yard variance as well. That's the only... And then our next example. door neighbors who are immediately close to our um, expansion, they just did this same thing, basically adding a second floor onto their garage. I don't know if they required a side yard variance though. So um, I, I don't, I don't I mean, know. The don't other know. thing that I wanted to make note of too is uh, the, the conditions. I don't know if you have, um, as part of the plans, you can see the aerial of our existing lot and you can see that the side yard where we plan to encroach is at an angle. So while we are encroaching on the front corner, we're going to keep the existing uh, side yard of the existing garage, right? So it's it's only at the pinch point of the corner of the expansion rather than the whole face of the uh, construction going into the um, side yard. If you made it a one-car garage, would you still have this issue needing a, a variance? Um, that I don't know. If you made it a one car garage, you'd still be non the existing nonconformity would well, still would be pre existing. Yeah, pre existing is, is fine. Would you and be what? extending the the um, the um, pre the nonconformity, or would you be within that pre you know that grandfathered pre existing? Well, I think the Maybe question would not, also have to be. Well, wait, um, if they have an, I don't know, you know, I don't know whether the um, exist, I don't know what they require. I'm not looking at my code right now. I don't know for this house whether they need two parking space, two, two spaces or one space. If they need two spaces and they have an existing one space because the prior owner configured it when he shouldn't have and there was no certificate of completion or anything, and I don't remember looking at the application if there was. So to answer your question, we'd have to double check and see whether turning it into, a, if it's officially a two car, he needs to stay. I don't know the answer, but we'd have to look at that. That's all I'm saying, and without, I don't know the answer. Just to answer your question. Just something else we'd have looked, to consider. I know we've looked at applications where if you can be in the garage and then another car can fit in the driveway, that, that that's two spaces. Well, I'm just saying, but we have to, I'm, I'm not saying we're gonna do that, but we have to figure it out. 
I think I personally I think a house in this vicinity, I think every house would have a two car garage or certainly most of them. And that's that's what they're trying. They're trying to to invest in their house and a two car garage is almost standard in in uh, in homes like this. Um, you know, you know, discussing the extent of the the variance that greater than or you said 30 percent of the very it's a 30 percent it's a at a very limited point that 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 uh percentage exists and that's why i said it was wasn't substantial you know i looked at it as how much square foot of that property is non-conforming or how much are we asking for that's non-conforming you know i i guess you you know if you say it's a percentage of that setback that's true but it as a percentage of area of the plot that's non-conforming it's, it's really very small and you know i don't i don't in terms of the the, the um, architecture of the house to stop it and move move it over it, it just it, and to have one car garage it, it just it's hard to it's it, it's not what they're trying to achieve and and considering that if that was, you know, the variance would have little effect on, on anything um, in terms of the neighbor, in terms of the environment, in terms of the uh, character. It just, um, I don't, I would, I would hate to reduce it to a single car because of that uh, outlook. That's, that's what I'm saying. I, I just don't think it would be, um, it would be forcing an issue and, and, and uh, I don't think it's, it just doesn't seem to be necessary because we're not really affecting anything. We're, we're the impact of, of the, uh, of the, of the request is so m minimal. How long is that piece where you are going from 9.5 feet to 11.7 feet? How, you know, the, the length, the other direction? No, I, I can tell you, I can. I'm back. It's um twenty. Twelve feet. Where it's twelve feet of the side yard that we come from the eleven point seven to the nine point five. Mr. McKinn, are you able to share your screen so everybody can see what you're talking about? Well, it, it's a plan. Don't don't you have the plans? I mean, I'm new. I'm asking because again, the public can't see it. That's why I was asking: Are you? Do you have it digitally, where and you can share your screen? Share my screen. How do I do that? I don't know how to do that. Oh, no, there you go. Never mind. We, we, it's, uh, that, now you can talk. You see, you, you see your, your plan is on the screen. That, there we go. <laughs> that's the existing plan. Fair enough. All right. So, uh, excuse me a minute. Uh, Robin. Yes. It seems that Abigail lost her internet connection. Is she back on? I don't know. Do you see her? No, from no, Abigail. She says she's oh, here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I got it. She's here. Okay. Okay. I don't see her, but I got I got a uh, little block that says she's here. All right. So, Mr. McKinn, what I'm seeing. It, it, what I'm, I I see the survey. I'm not seeing a, a, the proposed the uh, proposed pot plan. It shows the. Uh, it's, it's there. It's right. It's right oh. next. If you can shift over from the first floor plan, yeah. Keep going. Keep going. A little more. Over to the right. Oh, right. you go up. <laughs> there, there you go. Yeah. It's right, it's right, right there is. If you can blow that area up, you can see what we're. Uh, no, I'm marking it up on the. I can see a little bit right here, you know, right on the corner there. Yeah, if you move a little bit more 
we're talking about. Oh, well, now you can see it. If you see the proposed 9.5 feet and the existing. So we're talking about this little area right in here. Where? I, I got uh, I got the panelists lined up along. You can you can close I'm the sorry. panelists. Can you shift that site plan over further? Doug, if you go to the top of your panelist of that box that shows the panelist, um, it will and you go to the second square, it says show small active speaker video, and you can close all that, and all you see is the speaker. All right. So there's the there's the nine and a half feet sitting right here. There's eleven seven sitting right there. Right. The distance along that wall is twelve feet. So why is that an issue? I don't know. I, someone asked me how long it was. I asked how long it was. I wanted to get information so that well, we knew what we were, what we had here. That was all. It's that twelve foot. That's that corner is is the the amount that we're asking for. That that uh, which ends up to being about sixty square feet. That's why that I guess that was what prompted it. It's that's why I called it minimal. It's just sixty square feet. That would be. Uh, additional non-conforming. If I may, uh, Madam Chair, so Mr. McCain, um, Mr. McCain, if you would, um, just a couple of questions. What is the, uh, the side yard setback? What is the requirement? It's, it's, uh, I have to read it. Off. It's a combined it's in the table that he provided. We have all that in the table that he provided. It's right above the plot plan. He's got the table. 15 feet. 15 feet. All right, fair enough. And the next question, and, and my last question, Madam Chair, is um, as opposed to seeking the additional square footage on the side yard, which is requ requiring the variance, is there any reason why you couldn't have requested, you couldn't have uh, acquired the additional square footage in the back of the house? It would be, then it would be requ requiring a variance also. And what about on the left side? Would that have required a variance as well? It just it just would be impractical okay. to to add to that side of the house for for the garage. It would be see what 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 happens is I'm working with a, a set floor plan, so you lay out the components, and and you know with a, as minimal disturbance as you can, and this is what pretty much what we came up with. Uh, for the, we couldn't really put the garage on the other side of that building and, and it still would be probably non-conforming because I would have a, uh, I don't know how I could possibly do that. I mean, if that's what you're, uh, it just does, it wouldn't be practical. So we really, you know, that was one of the questions. Uh, is there any other way to do it? Can we go back? Can we go to the side? And, and considering the lot and the, existing floor plan, you really, we really can't. Um, practically speaking, it, do, it wouldn't make any sense to, to, to uh, look at it uh, another way. Of course I, I would, but it just, uh, this is the most logical floor plan for, for that house. If we're going to expand it, that's, that's, that's where we're at. And that's where, you know, we were, came to you for relief to 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 get that uh, that logical floor plan implemented i'm sorry to interrupt for a second abby are you i don't see you do you still need to be made a, a panelist someone make sure that she is added as a panelist nina or whoever is controlling the <laughs> switch here yeah i lost my my clients too uh, okay there you are. Are. we're still here that was very oh, weird <laughs> okay um sorry to interrupt go back to um okay uh greta do you have any more questions of the applicant i think you were the last speaker that was why i know Um, what were the, 
could you give me the names of the name of that neighbor who had an apple who had a side yard? Um, what year was that? Uh, Bob and Laura Heiss, and it was probably two years ago, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Um, maybe. Within the last uh, two or three years, they did an expansion. Um, it was like a bedroom suite. I don't remember what that was name. The address? The board. It's very similar to yours, too. And oh, maybe... sorry. I think, uh, Mike, you're thinking about the Zoffnesses, which is uh, next door uh, to us immediately. That's like a very similar renovation that they just completed um, in October, I believe. Across the street, they did. I think Alex just talked to him this afternoon. He yeah. said that he got a side yard variance. Um, and I can see if, let me see if I can they are, uh, find their address. It might be on that ladder. Uh, they were one of the letters of support that we submitted, so I can take a look to see. Um, They're 408 Rushmore. Robert and Laura Heiss. H E I S S. They said they got a specifically a side yeah, yard. That's what he said. I, I just talked <laughs> like, talk to him this afternoon because, you know, we have the sign in the front yard. So he said he got a side yard variance as well. Okay. Anything else? Does anybody of the board members have any questions? Um, just to speak to the Heiss variants, um, they were given a side yard setback where the required uh, side yard was 15 feet and the applicant proposed 6.3. And that was in 2017. Thank you, Betty Ann. Thank you. Thank you, Betty Ann. Thanks, Betty Ann. Betty Ann? Anybody sorry? else on the board? Okay. Yeah, Betty Ann, that went from 15 down to 6.3. That is correct. Thank you. Um, anybody from the public wish to speak on this application? It is a, a, a David Cooper, I believe. David Cooper has a question about the uh, prior application, so we're going to just hold that until this hearing is closed. Okay. Correct. And there are no other hands raised. Um, okay, does anybody else on the board have any questions, or if not, what do the board members want to do? Is there additional information you require um, before we close this hearing? Uh, Greta, Meg, Abby, Doug. I'm ready to close the application. Okay. So you, want to make a, you want to make a motion, Meg? I'll make a motion to close the application. I'll second that. Okay. Meg? Yes. Doug? Yes. Abby? Yes. Greta? Yes. And I vote yes, so this application is closed. We may or may not get to it tonight. Otherwise, we will get, wait a minute, before I say that, oh no, we may or may not get to it tonight. We'll see. Uh, okay, so this application is closed. Thank Cheers. you all very much. Thank you. I, thank you, Betty, for all your help with the checks and everything and being so responsive. My pleasure. Yes, Have a good Betty, evening. Betty, thank okay. you very much for your, all your help with that. Do we get a, a decision um, shortly? Is that what you... You have, have we may or may not vote on it tonight. We may, we may or may not get to it tonight. We may not get to it until next week. Oh, okay. Next right. week, I'm sorry, next meeting in September. I'll let you know tomorrow. Okay. okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. All right, the next Chair, step. Yeah. Chair, if I can just interject one second. Um, if we oh, can go yeah. back to Hampshire for one quick second, the information that Meg has requested is found in the 990s from 2018, page seven on the 990s forms. So they should be in your Google Drive and they should be in the email that I sent earlier today with the, uh, the opened uh, 990s. If you could look at page seven, that information can be found. That'd be great, um, it, but that doesn't include the certifications forms for those people. But thank you, Betty Ann. Of course. 
Okay. So the well, next step, ask, I, Robin, I, can we just what... have David Cooper just uh, oh. as a quick question about the prior application? Sure. Okay. I just, um, believe me, I don't want to extend the meeting and you almost caught me with my tie off, but uh, um, I, the certification forms, I'm just not sure what you're referring to because the, the 990s are obviously certified. They're just, it's a um, different question. We have a certification form that we request in most of our applications. I didn't realize it was not part of the renewal application in which it, it specifically asks about your affiliation with members of the village um, board and staff and whether you have any business in front of the building. The, oh, the, okay. That's correct. I thought, I thought that more or less. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I misunderstood. I thought you were looking for some sort of certification with respect to, to the 990s. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, not, doubting, not doubting the, the efficacy of the, the, uh, the information, the truthfulness of the information now. Got it. Okay. Um, I, I will probably be able to get that to you. Well, not tonight now, but, but, but quickly. The only other, the question I was, I was trying to ask before I got cut off was um, if the next meeting of the zoning board is on in September, and the board doesn't get to vote tonight, then I'm assuming that the special permit would just automatically be, be left open, would be extended because the, um, the deadline, we may be getting close to the deadline, I actually think will be before it if it's September, but. Since you got your application in in time, if we don't get to vote on it in time, yes, it would be extended. Okay, all right, thank it's you very much. Conti continued, whatever, it's not terminated until before the vote. Okay, thank you, just wanted that confirmation. Um, all right, the next application is 5A2020, Brian and Elori Taylor, 600 Lorraine Street. Before you, sp I have one question that we need an answer to pretty quickly. Um, the application says it is the Taylor residence, but the, app, but the plans submitted, and if you drive by the house, it's clear, it's a two family house. So the question is, is it a two family house? Yes. Yes, uh, yes it's a legal two family house. The, the Taylors are the owners of the residence. It's owner-occupied two-family house. They occupy. Is this because it's a pre-existing non-conformity? Mm -hmm. It's in a zone where that's uh, for single-family homes, but we understand that I can see by the age of the house, it must have been there for some time, so perhaps it's a pre-existing non-conforming use? Mm -hmm. That's correct. Meg, do you want to raise your issue? Yes, I guess it's to go to Frank. I would like to ask Frank um, uh, if you could review in the zoning code 342-64, non-conforming use of buildings, uh, paragraph A, this is for the protection of the homeowner, that if they are granted and, and they proceed with an enlargement of the use of the building that's pre-existing non-conforming, they first need to get a variance from the ZBA or they'll lose their non-conformity, the right to have the non-conformity. That's what I read in 342-64A. I'm sure, the bottom line is that part of the, when you are, you have a two family house and the two family house right now has a certain configuration of bedrooms and everything else. When, and it is a non-conforming use. When you expand that, our zoning code requires a, an additional variance, which was not applied for tonight. Yes, it says any other alteration, enlargement, or new construction shall require a variance to be granted by the Board of Appeals. So you need a variance to expand the non-conforming use. Okay, can I say something? Yes. Oh, yeah, so the non-conforming use in essence is the second unit. We are expanding unit number one, which is the owner occupied residence. We are not touching the unit number two, which dictates the non-conforming use. So in essence, we're not expanding the degree of non-conformity, we're enlarging unit number one, the primary residence. It, it, it's a legal to, you know, and this board has the uh, opportunity to, to grant the variances that we're requesting, the area variance. Um, should an additional variance be granted, we request that it be reviewed as well. We weren't, you know, it wasn't part of the denial of our application. Otherwise, it would have been included in, in, with our application for a, an additional variance. 
We've been made, um, the board is an appellate body, therefore only has jurisdiction to review the building inspector's determination. We cannot independently decide to review an additional variance. If the building inspector, and I think what Meg was asking was for the building inspector to look at this again and determine whether or not an additional variance is required. And if so, then he would need to issue that objection relating to the additional variance and um, that would have to be submitted. Okay. So, we so, cannot so we consider move? it. So, um, you know, Frank, what do you um, have? So, to shall we move forward with the presentation for what's in the application? Well, uh, let, we can't, hold on a minute. Okay. Frank, can you make that tonight? I don't know whether have formally issue, if not, that's fine. We can move forward with what's there, um, but we will not be deciding it tonight because we cannot decide any of the, if, if the, so, so two things. If in fact you need the variance to expand the non-conforming use, I'll explain why notwithstanding it's the first house that's still expanding. The, the, there's nothing that says that this unit is the, is the conforming and the second one is not. It is a non-conforming two family house. You are expanding the size of a non-conforming two family house. <laughs> Therefore, um, if it requires a variance, it doesn't matter which unit you're expanding or altering. Second thing is, um, the fact that it's the first unit, as you call it, might is going to be relevant to our consideration, but isn't. But that's not the decision. It's still a two-family house. So um, I think what we can do is proceed on the application as you as it's been filed. But we cannot close the application tonight because Frank is going to have to look at it and reach a determination as to whether an additional variance is required. So, yeah, but Robin, Robin, if the property is a non-conforming, yes, and it is, yes, regardless of the first being in conformance, once that second was added there, the whole property becomes non-conforming. So Correct. it will require the variance. Yes, but uh, but Frank has to issue that objection before we can consider it. That's we can't, correct. That was my point. So. Um, Mr. Shulman, if you want to proceed with the application and the variances that are pending, we're happy to hear you tonight about that. Um, and then we'll move then. And then at the next meeting, assuming Frank issues the objection, um, we'll consider the additional other variance that you would need. But it's okay. all about you can't vote on anything without everything. Okay, well, I'd be happy to walk you through the project. Uh, am I able to share my screen? Can, can someone allow me to share my screen? Robin, I just want to pick up my zoning code in the back. I'll be right back. Diane, am I able to share my, can you allow me to share? You can share it now. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's, looking at the survey first. It's an existing residence uh, on a corner lot. The variances in question are because of the existing nonconformities to the rear yard and, and side yard. Uh, we, the proposed addition sits exactly on top a portion of the house. It does not go further. It does not increase the degree of nonconformity into those yards. If you look at the left side, the left side is really the rear, um, so which would require a 25 uh, foot setback and the existing is 8.5. Uh, so a variance is required on that side. And then the skinny side on top is actually the side where six feet is required. Um, and we are at 5.3, so a 0.7 foot variance is required. Uh, as well as the additional square footage pushes us over the, uh, the FAR of 2373, we would be at 2818. So it's about an 18% variance on that. So in terms of percentages, they, 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 are, they seem significant, but in terms of effect on the site and the neighborhood, uh, the, the, you know, the, the effect is barely uh, felt because they're not intruding further into any of the yards. So I'll, I'll just walk you through the plans. The existing residence, um, where's the first floor? Oh, yeah. 
The existing residence uh, for the owner, Mr. and Mrs. Taylor, who are on, is a two bedroom unit, uh, kitchen, dining room, living room. Uh, they love the neighborhood, they love the town. Uh, they're a gr young growing family, so they needed more bedrooms. Working from home, which everybody is doing now, needed an office, so this was an opportune time. Uh, so basically the whole left side of the house uh, above the two existing bedrooms, bathroom, uh, is it, that's a one story right now. It's just a very, a flat roof or a very net shallow hip roof. So the proposal is to build on top of that. And, and the right side of the house is dining room, living room, porch. Above that is the tenant, the unit number two, unit number two. Um, the proposal is to build exactly on top of the footprint, adding two bedrooms, an office, and a bathroom. We were able to fit it in. You can see the red hatched area is the unit, uh, unit number two, uh, the, the tenant. Um, the residence, first on the side elevation, you can see on the very left side where it says addition and addition, that's where the proposed addition is. The whole right side, the, the two and a half story structure is existing, that's not being touched. Um, the left side is where we are adding one story, which helps a lot with the traffic flow on the inside. This is the front of the street. Nothing is visible from that street, from that side. Uh, this is the side elevation. Looking at the addition, this is where the bedrooms have been added. And I just want to show you a little bit. So this kind of shows you the red part is the tenant, the light blue uh, where, where there's an existing storage basement, the first floor, and now the added second floor. So it's just easy to see. So in terms of height, it's not massive. Uh, the overall effect, there's no excavation. There's no added drainage. There's no added stormwater. It's just a very logical addition. And we just put together, in hopes of going to the Architectural Review Board next, we, we put together, they're, we're reciting the house, they're investing in the neighborhood, they're investing in the property, and they're, they're very happy uh, to do that. So we put together just new siding, new roofing, and this was what the addition would look like. Okay, we also have, um, you know, we, we've submitted the five questions in terms of being self-created. It's self-created in, in the sense that, yes, it, it's desired, but, you know, in actuality, um, it, it's also as a result of the existing non-conforming lot, in, in, you know, in, in result of the setbacks. Uh, but in terms of affecting neighbors, environment, uh, really minimal effect. We also have uh, letters from two neighbors uh, in support of the application. They're excited that the neighborhood, that values would go up, that their neighborhood would be prettier, uh, that the Taylors are wonderful neighbors. So there's a neighbor, 739 Jefferson Avenue, as well as uh, William and Jill Kathleen at 728 Jefferson Avenue. So I believe you, you should have a copy of that. Um, so let me just go back here. So, so in essence, the, uh, the, the variance is really a result of a lot of the existing site conditions and we did not propose to go any further. So I would be happy to answer any questions. Uh, does anybody on the board have any questions at this time for the applicant? Um, I, have I, I have a question. I mean, you know what, I drove by, I saw that the height was not going to be a problem because you've got two very tall, you know, you got tall buildings too on, um, I guess it's Jefferson, short buildings on Lorraine, you're taller than the buildings on Lorraine, but you're not taller than the buildings on Jefferson. Um, my question is, you are very close to the rear yard and you're very close to, I guess that's the side yard. So um, you're close. Did you consider reducing the second floor so that it was set back a little bit more? Well, we, we looked at that initially to try to do really what was needed in terms of the interior layout of what we were trying to accomplish. So if you look at the sizes of the rooms, it's they're really not all that 
over grand. I mean, the office is eight feet by 13. We squeezed in a bathroom. We had to be very creative with our walls just to kind of fit it in. So to, to reduce it would be this 12 foot nine area or the 13, 10, making those rooms smaller. At, at some point, you know, could we do it six inches or a foot and still have a functional bedroom? Sure, would that truly help in minimizing the effect? If we moved it over five feet, then no, it, it doesn't really work as a room. So, so, you know, we looked at it and we just felt because, and also for the ease of construction, for the siding, for the, you know, the cost, everything in effect, we felt it was the best solution to just align with the existing footprint. Thank you. I, I will tell you, you're talking about, you can't really reduce the size of these bedrooms in the bathroom. They're, the, they're bigger than the bedrooms and the bathroom in my house. So, you know, I don't know that it's so clear you can't reduce their size. Um, anyway, go ahead. Anybody else have any questions? Um, I, well, I have a comment and a question. Um, first, the elevations do look very nice, so I can see why you wanted it to be straight across. Um, I was looking at, in the code, about corner lots. And when you take a lot that you have the choice to make each street line as the front line, which it looks like you did on this lot, and what I'm reading here is that then you consider the other two yards as side yards. So you don't even have a rear yard. It actually makes it seem that less substantial, the oh, amount. Well, you know, I, I looked at that and, and sometimes that's the case. I, I was looking for that because in other towns it is that way, but I, I didn't see that. So yeah, I would, I would go to Frank if I'm reading this wrong, but it's 342 or, or the planner. Hi, Mr. 342-15.1. Um, a number one, that's what I'm reading. And it says that if there's two street lines are the front lines, then the other two lines are considered side yards. So I think you're still, you're still looking for a variance or you're increasing the variance, but it's not quite as substantial. Well, well if that's the case, we, one variance becomes eliminated is not necessary because we have a setback of 8.6 where six is required. Oh no, this, yeah, 8.6 where eight is required. So the sum has to be 14. So that's that was the largest variance percentage wise that we were asking for. If that goes away, we're looking for a side yard variance and then the FAR variance. Well, I, I would, if, if Mr. Long or Frank wants to, you know, tell me that I'm not interpreting it correctly, but that's what it looks like to me. And um, my question though is in your driveway, how many cars do you fit in your driveway? So, <laughs> Uh, Mr. Taylor, yeah, so currently we fit one one car in the driveway. It's very uncomfortable to try to fit two. We're trying to open the doors. So that's why we're trying to just expand the driveway a little bit. Really, it's, you know, it's a little bit of dirt at the top there and then some rocks on the side. So we're not really eliminating space that we're using for something else. I, I think it's it's you're actually required to have more parking spaces for the two family home. I wonder though, if that's part of the pre-existing non-conformity because obviously this whole thing was built at an earlier date. Is that something we can wrap up into the pre-existing non-conformity that they are lacking some of the parking spaces? Yeah, so we're just trying to ex expand it to one additional so that we have two for ourselves. So it would just be for us. That's an improvement, but I believe it was four for a two family, but obviously oh. I could be wrong. But. No, 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 you're right. But that's not the issue. It's if they have a legal non-conforming house, then, right. and the parking hasn't been changed, then the, if it's legal non-conforming, that means the parking they have is appropriate because otherwise they couldn't have a legal non-conforming house. So if they are that respect, they're not making any changes to the parking. Okay, that's if it's wrapped up into the legal non-conformity. Well, if like it's legal non-conforming, it has to be because if they didn't have, if they, were required to have two parking spaces when the house was built, then it wouldn't, and they didn't, then it wouldn't be legal non-conforming. So if it's legal non-conforming, that would um, include the parking. So it's all, so in that sense, it is wrapped up because it has to be. So it either is or isn't. Yeah, and, and, and Madam Chair, um, you know, myself and, um, and the building inspector, we'll take a look at that tomorrow. Great, thank uh, you. Yeah, uh, because I know it's, there's very specific requirements for parking. So we just say, you know, I mean, my approach in this whole thing is we wanted to make sure that they have 
applied for every variance they could possibly need so there could be no questions later on. I yeah, appreciate that. If I, if I can say a couple of things, uh, we've been in Rhinec since my daughter was in kindergarten, so that makes it nine years. She's actually going into ninth grade. When we bought the house six years ago, we were a family of three, and now we're a family of five, right? Mm -hmm. So we've kind of expanded a little bit. So obviously we're trying to get more than the two bedrooms. We love our neighbors, the neighborhood. Uh, our daughter's best friend lives across the street. They were one of the people that submitted a letter of support as well. And the other mm -hmm. letter of support, which is the second one, is the house that's right behind ours. So mm -hmm. they would be most impacted from this particular change. Um, you know, we just want the additional well, you know, and, and one of the things that we do as a board is to make sure that if you put the application in, you know, that no one can come back later and say, hey, wait, they needed this variance, they needed that variance. Right. We just want to make sure all the bases are covered so that when we consider the application, we can make the appropriate determination and no one's going to come back and say, hey, you know, you guys didn't think of this. No, okay. we appreciate that. We appreciate that. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have I, I have a, a comment. Um, Go ahead. On on that section 342.15.1, it for corner lots it's it appears that the owner is required to designate the front lot line, um, and that, that that designation needs to be filed with the building department. Did you um, ever do that formally? Uh, I believe there are two front lots. There needs to be a, a designation, which is well, then filed. Th the there's a there would be a designation where the front door is if that result is the rear is directly opposite that front. If there are two sides and two fronts, then it's it's irrelevant which is the front, but we'll go with the front door is the front. I think the point that Greta is trying to make is once you declare one of the sides, the front yard, you can't on a subsequent uh, application change that. So I don't know if uh, well, I don't know I don't know what's on file from any sort of previous filings or when the house was built or or you know how this was approved originally, but. Um, if there are two fronts, then obviously Jefferson and Lorraine are both fronts. And if, the, and if there are two sides, then it can never be changed because there's no rear. So let's go with Lorraine as the front where the 20 foot setback is required as well. We'll look at that tomorrow. Also. Okay. But, but, but if, if there is no rear yard setback for a corner lot, um, you know, I, I think that's in favor of our application where there is no rear and thus, we would re be requesting a minimum variance of this, the one side yard uh, in addition to the FAR. So I appreciate that. I, th I think the, um, the building inspector will just have to relook at this and see if there's anything else that he needs to. Okay. To consider, to issue yeah. objections with respect to and let everyone know. Um, anything else, Greta? Um, just a question. The letters of support from the neighbors, was that submitted to us? I don't, it's not in the Google Drive that I was looking at. It, it was emailed to Betty Ann. I have copies here, but I believe what? they were submitted, yes. So Betty Ann, could you make sure that we get copies? Yeah, I was looking for that too. But this looks like a great project, so. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Madam Chair, if I may, just one, one quick question for the board. Uh, one of the criteria that the board looks at is whether or not there's an undesirable change that will be, that will be produced uh, in terms of the character of the neighborhood as a, as, as a result of the, the variances that are being requested. And uh, would the board like a recommendation from the Architectural Review Board as to, uh, from a design standpoint, whether or not there will be an undesirable change to the character of the neighborhood? My answer is no, but what do the rest of the board members think? I think this is not, our issue isn't whether the design is appropriate. We'll leave that for the architectural view board. Our issue is going to be whether the height and um, the other changes that are sort of physical to the lot are it, but what it looks like is entirely up to the- It's not so much as what it looks like, it's more so they, the ARB specializes in looking at 
the character of the neighborhood and the preservation of the character of the neighborhood. So that's the reason why I bring it to your attention. I don't think we want to make a practice of that, but I will ask the other board members if you do, because if we start doing that for this, then I see no reason why we wouldn't have to do that for every area of variance. So um, I take, leave right. it to the board members if now that it's been raised, what do you want to do? No, I, I mean, I agree. I wouldn't want to slow anything down, right? I mean, but the point is not necessarily, in this situation, it's not slowing anything down because the applicant has to come back next month anyway. I don't want to do it because I don't think um, that, I, I think if we, we can make a decision as to what character of the neighborhood, since it's part of our determination, we haven't done this before, and we can drive around and look at the neighborhood ourselves, which we should be doing. So um, let's take, so Abby, what do you think? Let's just go board members, what do you think? I, I mean, I'd, I'd rather not, but I'd, I'd also maybe, you know, next month, I'd love to hear from our new planning director on, on kind of pros and cons, because this is the first time we've ever, you know, considered it. At the same time, I always just never want to, um, you know, slow everything down. And we've already come back to these people with, with um, you know, a, a, an unexpected requirement. So that's, that's my thought on it. Greta, what are your thoughts? Um, I would say no. I think it, in, my, my first instinct is that it interferes with our independent fact-finding assessment. So I would say no. Okay. Abby, uh, Abby, I got you. Um, Meg? Yeah, I thank you, Mr. Long, for the idea. It was a creative idea, but I say no. I think that when we're talking about the character, the nature of the how it affects the neighborhood is really more about the size, the use, doorways, yards, um, and you know, and it's not about the design, and that we shouldn't be thinking about that. And that's where we would be headed if we get that recommendation. Okay, um, and Doug, I might as well ask you, even though it's it's clear that by majority we don't want, we, we're not going to no, ask them to do that. I'm sorry. Right. I agree. No. Okay. So thank you, Mr. Long, for your suggestion, but I think we are not going to be requiring um, the applicant to, okay. or we're not going to requesting any uh, additional information from the architecture. And, and I apologize if I overstep by presenting the renderings. I just, and I know it's not the purview That's of this right. board to look at the colors or materials, but oftentimes in answering the five questions, if it does have a negative or positive effect, the, the renderings help to just as a as a big picture uh, to say that it's within character of the neighborhood. That's all. No, thank you. We actually appreciate it. It does make it easy for us to view the project in its entirety. Thank right. you. I agree. Um, anybody else on the board have any questions? No. Um, does anybody from the public wish to speak on this application? Uh, Glenn wishes to speak. Okay. Can you, can, um, yeah, can you go ahead? Glenn? Glenn, you're on mute. Uh, you can hear me now? Yes. Yeah, I think the application is fine. I just basically wanted to uh, wish Betty Ann the uh, best in her endeavor. <laughs> and, uh, I hope she's not a stranger and can come to the village occasionally and have a cup of coffee with everybody. Take yeah. care. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Glenn. We feel the same, same way. Thank same. you, Glenn, for bringing that up. Thank you, Betty Ann, for everything that you did for us to get to this point. Uh, thank, thank you, you. For, in your future endeavors. Yeah. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, we are going to adjourn this application. We know we have additional information that we're waiting for from the village, the building inspector, the village planner, um, and we'll adjourn it to the next meeting. Okay, thanks everybody for your time. Thanks, thanks everyone. Don't, okay. Um, okay, uh, so we've considered all of the public hearings. We don't have any more public hearings. Before we go and begin the consideration of any of these uh, closed applications or even the ones tonight, um, we are going to step aside, the board members are going to step aside for, from this Zoom meeting to request advice of council. So we will be calling board members. You have a phone number or Betty Ann can recirculate that phone number um, and we will all be calling in. Okay. Um, it's gonna take me a moment to find that, so. Yes, yeah, it's gonna take us all a moment to, sure. to do that, but. Um, we're gonna leave this meeting 
and and dial into a different meeting. Is that correct? correct? So everybody should put themselves on mute. Yes. yes. Right. If you want the number, it's eight two five. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, but before you do that, uh, Miss Mason, uh, if they're going into executive session, do they not need to um, uh, vote to go into executive session? We're not going into executive session. We're going into advice to council. It's a advice to council. Okay. Um, it's a separate uh, thing, I guess, if you want to call it that. Um, but it does not require a vote. Oh. Just is that in our agenda materials? It's sent to you, I think, as no. executive. It was a separate email. It's a. Uh, but can I repeat? We are leaving this meeting. Somebody just said the mute. There's no point to mute because we're going to leave the meeting. Actually, is that no. correct? No, 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 no. Sorry. Okay. Is the email from Betty Ann? Or, again, you're not leaving the meeting. You're just going to mute yourself and turn your video off. And Nina can help with that, I'm sure. Yeah, why don't... Uh, I'm sorry. It, we're going to mute and turn off our video. And then what are we going to do? Then you're Call into that up. number. On our phones. On your yes. phone. Thank um, you. I need explicit. I'm very factual. Look at the... Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll talk to you in a minute. Can just send me the number so I make sure I get it right. Betty Ann's gonna send it to you. Uh, Nina, can you just maybe the simplest thing to do is for you to um, mute and and okay, I'll stop everybody's video. Check your email now. Hi, all the number is not working. Um, I don't know if there's an alternate number that we can use, Betty Ann. The number isn't working. Yeah, no, we're gonna we'll try and figure this out if we I'll can. I'll give you a new one. Give me two seconds to email it. Okay, thank you. Of course.
I sent a new number. There's a new um, <clears throat> participant code. Christy, you have the moderator code. Okay, sounds good. I'm just waiting to get it. Nope, oh, got okay. it. Okay, give me one. Ann, it just keeps it, it rings like a um, phone and then goes to voicemail. It goes to voicemail. Yeah, it goes to voicemail. Yeah, it might be the conference line. Is it wrong? I have 825-8160. Maybe it's something different. No, no I think what happened it was possible is uh, I know that they said they were supposed to be IT was doing something with the phone system. Oh. And that could be what's what's affecting. No, but that's not 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 6-0. Yeah. No, it isn't. Yeah, so the new number is sending me to a voicemail as well. Yeah. I have no I, way yes. of oh. I just I, I can't call, it doesn't look like enough numerals. Line. It won't let me call anything because it's not enough numerals. That's weird. I don't know. Is there an area code for this? It's 914. Oh, I didn't realize that wasn't in there. Yeah, but even at that, it, it sends you to. Uh, yeah, it sends you to a voicemail. So I'm I'm not yeah. sure it's, either. It's the the only conference line we have. Yeah. Does well, anyone else? I mean, I have on. a work comp line. Does anyone else have a conference line that maybe we could use? Or I don't know mine. Try one nine one four maybe. No. I Voicemail. Using that. Yeah, it sends me the. And voice. it's just getting elevated. I think there's probably yeah. just we are setting up the uh, like whether maybe for some reason we can't access the. It's conference. just going to voicemail. There's it's a separate line. Yeah, um, Robin. I don't. I, we're having technical difficulties, so I'm not sure what how you want to handle it. If you just want to move forward, and we'll have a. Can we move forward and and somebody can work behind the scenes and we can do this later if somebody can figure something. Well, there's a limit to how later we can do because it's relevant to the applications we have for us tonight. Um, so. Um, well, if you're not able to do it, uh, you know, um, you could call a special if that's the case. Call a what? Special, special meeting. meeting. That that won't help us tonight. Yeah. Um, it's tonight, but I mean, it would be it would put you in a situation where uh, you know, come maybe tomorrow or the day after, or sometime early next week, um, you could have uh, you could we have, have discussion. Wait, we have to do it tonight, unfortunately. Um, all right, all right, fair enough. Um, the only other thing I can think is if we set up a separate Zoom meeting, but I don't know how long that's going to take to figure that. Oh, out. Oh, I could do it immediately. Can you? I could. I can do it immediately. Okay. If you can send us the the link. Yeah, yeah. Take me. I mean, it'll take me two or three minutes. I say immediately, but it'll just take me two no, or three minutes it, to actually set it up. It I have to. No. I have to log into the particular place where I have my Zoom meeting listed, and so okay. let me log in and let me do this. We will all go. Have Robin, to, go. Sorry, just FYI, we will all have to leave this meeting to join the other. So we will have to leave this Zoom meeting. Hey Robin, you'll be sending it through email. You'll be sending the I'm going to be sending it through email. Password. Yes, I'm going to send it all to, um, and yes, I'll send it all to email. Um, and so we will rejoin this meeting once we are done with the advice of council. Um, okay. But we'll all have to leave. I'm going to stay on until I see. Yes, yeah, totally. You know, that's fine. It will take me a minute or two, assuming I have to log on to something to do this. And sometimes it takes a couple minutes to log on. And it's yeah. Zoom? Okay, I've logged on. Now I can get into it. Give me a, again, it'll take me a couple minutes, but I can do it. I can send an ID in. I have some, I have a, I, have, I can do it. It's fine. I will. Yeah, let's stay.
time is it? Right. And I would put a password on it, although I'm sure you. I, I have a waiting room. Um, oh, okay. I will. Oh, I didn't establish the waiting room. Yes, I do have a waiting room. So I have to let you in. I think, hopefully, um, yeah. It should be give. It should put you into the waiting room. Um, okay. But I have to now. I have to. I can't forward you from this. So I have to copy the. the I have to copy the, the, should be able to monitor who's coming into the meeting. So. Yeah, hopefully the password, hopefully the, um, oh. I'm happy to set up one, Robin, if you have any. No, no, I got it here. It's, um, it's there. I just want to make sure. So we've got, I just want to make sure that the right people are on that list <laughs> too. Abby, Christy, Doug, Ed Smith. Uh, you know, I need, he's not here. That's fine. Frank, Greta, Meg, Michael. Oh, you've got a lot of people on here that we don't need. Okay, no. Mike, I can't. Would be good to join just so that he can. I, I don't have a problem with that. It's just, uh, you know what? Um, it doesn't matter. They, I don't have a problem with them, but it's too much trouble for me to take off. Yeah, I'm just going to send it to you. Can I ask a question? Why are people beyond the board joining in the advice of council? Why is it not it's just lawyers? Counsel. It's just oh, yeah. Betty Ann should not. Oh, good question. Betty Ann and, and Frank don't need to be in on it. It's just the it's just correct. The Betty Ann and Frank should not be on here. But Michael, as a lawyer, should. But Michael, as a lawyer, should. You're right, Meg. I guess I say. Um, so it's Betty Ann. So Betty Ann and Frank and Mike and um and the planner should not be on here. Only right. people that should be on here are the ZBA and their lawyers. So right. I'm going to start the meeting and hopefully I got um, it. So I'm going to exit the meeting and try and join. Okay. Um, I'm going to swear I have to start the meeting. Start this meeting. Are we calling in or is this? Uh, it's it's Robin, Robin, there's no password because I'm not going to be able to use the URL. I'm going to type this in. There's no, no password. She's using a waiting room. Okay. I'm just going to type this in, but if there's, I'm not going from URL. Are we going to join another Zoom meeting? Hello? Yes, Robin just sent you a link to another Zoom meeting. You'll need to leave this one and log into that one.
Um, okay, so we are all coming back. The, we are recommencing uh, the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting of what, July 23rd after having gone, um, left the meeting in order to get advice of counsel. Just waiting for Doug to call back in. So Doug, I don't know. I still don't see him. It took, uh, just to the public, it took us a while. We had some communication difficulty on the other advice of counsel session. So um, that's what caused it to be so long. Um, uh, okay. Nina, can you let Michael in, Michael Hartman? Hello? Hello. Are you back? Um, Abby, are you there? I know you're, you're there, but are you there? I am here. Okay. I'm here. here. Um, now we lost Doug. Doug? We d I, I don't know if you're there, Doug, but we don't see you or hear you. Hold on. How about now? Can you hear me? Yes, I can see you. Okay, so um, the next item, item on the agenda, um, which is our closed public hearings and consideration is eight is, is uh, calendar 8SP 2020, 9SP 2020, and 9A 2020. We had previously determined those, were, those applications were based on the building inspector's determination that what was needed for this application was an area variance and special permits. Uh, in prior meetings, I think in June, we determined that in fact a use variance was needed because uh, of the fact that food was being produced for sale off the premises. Um, and therefore the use was not a permitted use and he needed a, a use variance. However, we only just became aware of the fact that in order for us to actually consider that application, we needed a determination from the building inspector. Um, Therefore, we cannot vote on it, on the application as it was uh, filed based on the objection. If we vote today on the area variances, even if we granted them, the applicant is potentially, there's a potential issue for the applicant because it's not a permitted use and therefore an objection could subsequently be filed um, and he'd have to stop the use anyway or the building inspector could subsequently issue a violation for a non-permitted use. Therefore, we're trying to, uh, you know, we want to make sure that when we give our approvals, as we discussed at the last meeting, we were willing to do, um, we want to make sure it's it works, that it's watertight and it's legal and the use can proceed. Now, um, because we realize this is, the, you know, the application has been here for quite a while and we raised this issue, only this new one today, what we are proposing to do is to hold a special, is to ask the building inspector to review this application and make a determination as to whether a use variance is needed or not tomorrow, or if, if, assuming that's possible tomorrow, and issue it immediately so that, and then we would schedule a special meeting as early as possible. 
Now, the applicant would have to send out the um, notices again because it is a new determination and it's a jurisdictional requirement. So the applicant would have to notify the neighbors again. And what would happen is we'd pick a date, we'd have the public hearing, and we'd close it, and we'd vote in accordance with what the straw vote that we gave at the last meeting, which was to approve it. Um, now, uh, the one last thing is we have cl we closed the public hearing more than 62 days, or if we go to the, I don't know if it's already 62 days, but certainly uh, if we if we do not vote today, it will certainly be more than 62 days. Now, what the code says is if you, what the law says is if we do not vote within 62 days, it is either deemed denied or we have to get an extension, an approved extension from the applicant. So right. I'm Did asking we if- we six weeks ago? We just closed it six weeks ago, I thought. Is it, is it counted from six weeks ago? I think it's actually from the one prior. I think it was May. Betty Ann, are you there? It was May, yes. When did we close it? I believe it was May. Wasn't it? Sorry, didn't we discuss it at the last meeting? Yes, but it doesn't mean it was closed at the last meeting. I understand yeah. that. I was just surprised. Extension yeah. was requested at the last meeting and they approved the extension at the last meeting. So Okay, so we, we closed just, it in May. So, yeah. so it was closed a long time ago. Um, so, um, so we would need another extension. The extension would not be until the next meeting because um, it would not be until the next meeting because we are proposing to hold a special meeting at the earliest possible date once that is that is possible, which would be and that date would be based on the building department issuing his um, his uh, any new objections tomorrow and the applicant sending out the notices. We would also to the extent that the village would imp would normally impose fees for the new variants, we will uh, request that these, I don't know if we can vote to approve, but if we can vote to approve tonight, that those fees be waived, or um, then we will vote to approve the waiver of all other fees, but he will have to do the notice requirement. Uh, Finally, wait, one more, there was one more thing. Um, I think there was one more Betty thing. Ann, Betty Ann can assist perhaps with the notice of so uh, th since the applicant did in uh, previous submissions address the criteria for yes. the use variance, is there a new application required then? Or can you go on that additional information that was previously uh, submitted by the applicant? I think he might have to do a new cover page because we need a formal application. But if he does a new cover page and then just attaches everything else he submitted previously, we should have all the information we need. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. The last time we met was June. The first meeting was May. And then we discussed this again in June. And I thought that the applicant participated. And if the applicant participated, then I don't think we had closed it in May. It seems like we went closed it in June since we had waited for him to bring his evidence of the financial hardship and for the real estate. I thought we kept it open and so that it was June that we closed it. But even if we closed it in June, that would have meant we wouldn't need an extension to vote tonight, but June, whatever it was, sixth or seventh plus 62 days may very well take us beyond the date that we're gonna be voting on this, given that we'll need the time for notice to go out, et cetera. So we need, so we couldn't do it. We, we wouldn't necessarily be able to. Betty Ann, can you double check? The June notice, the June agenda, shows that application as already being on the closed applications list. It was in the public hearings list on the May agenda and the June 4th agenda, it was on the closed application section. Okay, it just surprises me. Don't we remember speaking to them? I, I, I totally, I'm sure you're right, Betty Ann. I just remember that we had suggested it. We asked them to prepare evidence for the argument that it needed a use variance. So that was before that, that was okay. before that. That was in May. We, he submitted all of his ab, uh, he submitted all of the evidence about the use variance before that. He may have spoken. We may have asked him a question, like we're going to ask him tonight to grant us the extension. So okay. sometimes we do get them get the applicant to speak, um, even at a you know even after it's closed because we have sp specific questions. So I don't know if the applicant is here tonight. Or we do have a representative for the applicant here, and they were um, on uh, 
April and May as public hearing. So right, it was right. two weeks. So, um, so anyway, the, 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 what we would need to do tonight, assuming the applicant is okay with granting the extension, is we would need to determine what the date of that special meeting would be. Um, Betty Ann would work with the applicant to make sure that uh, Frank will issue his new, if there is a new, I'm not pre-telling him there is a new objection, he will review it tomorrow and make any determine, additional determination he needs tomorrow. Uh, we will need to, today we will have scheduled, we will then hold a public hearing and vote based on the straw poll that we took at the last meeting. So that would be essentially what we would vote on and approve, at, but we would have to formally hold, open the public hearing um, again. So- um, You'll be prepared to vote and finalize a resolution that night, hopefully correct. within the next couple of weeks. So anyway, um, Robin, that's where we are to the applicant. You, Do you wanna have anything to say about it? Are you referring to the 342.31E? Is that what the additional determination I'm supposed to be making? It's the permitted uses, which is in the C2. Yes, the permitted uses in a C2 district. That that uh, the, that goods produced have to be sold at retail. Yes, have to be sold on site on rather site. than cannot yeah. be sold in other locations. Got it right. Okay, no problem. Um, okay, so applicant. That's me. I'm here. Okay. So, did you hear what I said? Do I, or should I repeat it? Um, I, I did hear it all. Are you okay with grant, uh, granting us an extension so that we can have the special meeting? Understanding that we will um, ask, we will determine and or request, however the appropriate thing is, to get the village to waive any fees that would otherwise be required to be submitted. You would have to send out the notice again. We would also ask the building inspector. Um, to begin consideration, if he can, of those pieces of the application that are not dependent on the, var the use variance. For example, uh, plumbing, I, you know, plumbing and electrical and all of those types of things, so that if you wanted to start getting other parts of this application moving. And we're only doing this, this is a very special thing, we've never done this before, and we're only doing this because we didn't realize that there was a jurisdictional mm. issue until the very last moment today. Hmm. Uh, we'll, we will go with the flow. Thank you. Okay, board members, let's pick a date. Since it's a Zoom meeting, as long as I guess there's no other village Zoom meeting the same night, we can do it. Betty Ann, what do you have to say? So my, my question is uh, traditional meeting requirements for noticing is 10 days prior. How do we um, move around that? Why, no, we're not gonna move around the notice requirement. Okay, we're gonna no. Give, so, so if he needs 10 days, so let's assume we set the meeting and I'm just picking a day. This has nothing to do with approve. Let's assume we pick the date. Let's assume Frank does issue a new objection tomorrow. Then if we schedule, then he'd need 10 days and it's how, how long do you have to give notice to the neighbors, 10 days? Yes. So 10 days, so he would send out the notice either over the weekend or on Monday, and then 10 days from Monday, we could have the new, the special meeting. Um, I can get the, the notices problems. out tomorrow or Monday. That's too much, that's too soon for me. Sorry, I, I was trying to get it. Yeah, okay, yeah so, I, I can't. Uh, can you do it on if, Tuesday? If you make the meeting two weeks from tonight, that gives me enough time. If Frank gets his uh, ducks in a row, we will put our ducks in a row. Okay, Betty Ann, does that night, I don't know if everybody, everybody has to look at their calendars. Board members, please look at your calendars. And Betty Ann, is there any other Zoom meeting? Is there a planning board or anything else that night? No, we have no, um, no land use board meetings. This is actually the last land use board meeting until September. So, so August 6th, does that work for everybody? Uh, excuse me, Betty Ann. it would be a uh, very short meeting. architectural review board meeting. You have a what? Oh, we have BAR on the 4th and the 20th. Okay. All right. So um, you were looking at the 6th? I, I actually, um, I've, I've got a conflict. Um, if you want to make it three weeks. Well, it doesn't have to be a Thursday. Right. Do you want to try for Monday the 10th? I can't do Mondays. Um, 11th? Uh, 11th is fine with me. Um, 
could um i have to look at uh my calendar because i've got uh, some board meetings in other other municipalities okay why don't we uh, so to, so that we can move on and get be done with this why don't we pick two alternate days that we would have the meeting let the applicant look at his calendar tomorrow and he and Betty Ann would resolve on one of those two days as possibilities so um the 11th or the or the or the th 13th i guess would be when we the soonest we could do it i can't do the 12th um and i can't do the 10th so the 11th or the 13th yes is that okay with everybody else on the board yes and yeah. I, I can't do uh, August 11th. I can't do that. We could also do a different time, you know, I mean, the <laughs> we could do an afternoon meeting. I don't know. I mean, I don't really, it doesn't. No, I can't do an afternoon. afternoon. Okay, I was just trying to, because, I mean, okay, so we can't do an afternoon. So that leaves that. So then the 13th is the date. So we need an alternate date. Yeah, I'm not, sh I'm not sure I can do the 13th um but you know i certainly can do all the preliminary work and make a contribution that way um i we just could have know. a meeting without if you're okay with that Greta. we could have a meeting because we still have a quorum even if you weren't there presumably mm -hmm. um, i don't i would prefer not to do that but how about you know we don't tend to look at friday nights but um what about the seventh if we did it relatively early, so it didn't. Fridays are out. Fridays are out? Yes. Okay, Fridays are out. So we're left with the, the so we have the, uh, I mean, we have the 11th, but Abby couldn't do it. We have the, I can't do the 12th, so I mean, we could do without me. Um, and we have the 13th and Greta can't do, and everything else would be a following week. I think we probably want to try and do it sooner rather than later for the applicant's sake. Betty Ann, are you sure there's no meetings on the 11th already scheduled? Well, uh, our group, since we're Zoom, we can certainly do it the 11th. Like I said, uh, BAR is the first Tuesday and the third Thursday. So it's the fourth and the 20th. So why don't okay. we do it on Monday then? I can't do Monday. So as I said, you could do it without me, but I can't do, unless we did it at five o'clock, I could do five o'clock. But no, I can't, I can't do, can't do. Yeah, so you said you couldn't do during the day, so we can't do. So we can't, we cannot find within the next three weeks a day where all of us can be there is what it looks like. Um, Greta, you're ready if we do on the 13th, if you were not participating, is that okay with you, Greta, on the 13th? Yeah, yeah I mean, again, um, I don't, I don't think my vote is going to be critical. I think we, yeah, um, I think vote anyway. the board is pretty uniform and united in how they're thinking of this. So um, I don't want to uphold, I don't want to hold back um, the applicant going forward. So, um, and I may be available on the, on the 13th. I'm just not sure I may not be. Okay. <clears throat> so why don't we have, we, we, so the, so we're just coming up with one day. I don't know. So we have, we have had a lot of trouble coming up with an, a day, Mr. Demore. Demore. So, so I think if it's not the 13th, it's going to be the following week. So it's up to you whether or not you want us to look at a day the following week. I'm good for the 13th. Okay. So, um, so we will have a, so uh, we will have a special meeting to consider any new, uh, any new um, objections raised by the building inspector and if there are no new objections then to vote on the application as submitted uh, can, well uh, let me ask a question um, you folks already have all the paperwork is it uh, just a cover letter that I would need to send to you after I get the objection from no I, I think Frank? you need to submit the first page of the application and the first the, the write the cover sheet of the application um, and because I think you submit because you've submitted everything else, I think you should just you, formally, so at Christy, formally, should they resubmit, like just copy everything again and submit it? Or is it okay that they just submit the cover page? We have all the information um, and say something like, see prior submittal. 
Will that work? I would say, yeah, I think that's fine to say C prayers. Okay, so that's what you need to do. Madam, Madam Chair, the only question I have is if it's a use variance, does that change the, uh, does that change the EAF and the, the secret determination? Well, they filed this an EAF. So even if it wasn't needed before, I don't know. So I think we, we, we've already discussed this. So I think we're going to have to make a new secret determination as part of that. But I don't know that they need to submit a different EAF. Well, the description changes. The description. Yeah. Oh. The, the description in the EAF changes. Okay. So um, I guess, Mr. Demore, you do have to submit a new EAF based on the description. Um, and we'll just have to make a secret determination. Okay. All right. Uh, Betty Ann, how many uh, copies should I submit? Um, we're still doing and accepting only electronic at this time. So okay, it's electronic. You can email it to me and uh, I'll take care of annexing anything else. And uh, I wanted to say good luck uh, in your next endeavor. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to work with you as well. But now this is no longer my last land use board meeting. <laughs> 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 uh, and uh, I'd like to say uh, hi to William hi, Long you I've again. for 10 years uh, working in Mount Vernon together. Oh. Good luck, William, in your new job. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay, so we can, we know where we are. We've gotten the approval. We know when the new date is um, the 11th, right? I hope we, that's, what do we just know? The 13th. Sorry, I didn't even put it down. It was so, was, um, so okay, let us proceed to the next application. Thank you, Mr. Damore. We will we'll see you on August 13th. Okay, the next consideration is 31A 2019 Dominic Brescia for Capetta, um, which is, so at the last meeting, we had a straw poll and the, um, and the council drafted a resolution, a draft resolution based on that, um, based on that straw poll. So you have the, so if anybody has comments on that resolution, if you would please um, make them and then we will have a formal vote. Are, are we having one vote or is it two votes? Is it one vote on the lapse variances the you know, the variances that had lapsed and then uh, is it another vote on the affordable Yes, house? we will need two votes because there are no, two. I think you have three, right? No, there's a, there's the lapsed variances and then there two is. Variances. Two and variances. then extending two. those variances and then the area variance. Oh, we have to vote. So wait. Um, Let me pull up the resolution. I'm sorry. The it's board appealed and decided. Oh, we have to decide if it lapsed. And if we decide that it lapsed, we have to extend. If we decide it didn't lapse, then we don't have to extend. So it's either two or three votes. Yes. Although now I can't, hold on. I'm sorry, I'm having a hard time locating. All right, give me one moment. I'm having a hard time finding the. Should we send it back to you? I could find it and send it back to you. <laughs> I don't know why it's not where I. I feel like it's missing a section, no? Looks like it's missing a page, the 220, the 723. Yeah, it's missing a whole. I don't, what's it missing? It should be, there should be a second part about, uh, hold on, what am I? No. Lapsed variances. One is the lapsed variances. So oh, there it is. Sorry, I was thinking of it in three words. I say, I see it now, I'm it's sorry. I've got two resolutions in there. Yeah, I do, I do. I was thinking those as two separate, and so I thought maybe I sent a wrong no. resolution. I got confused, but you're right, it's all there, I'm sorry. Um, okay, everybody has it. Anybody have any comments on this? I have, I would like to add a little information about the finding about the use variance. 
Right now, um, it simply states that the application is not an error variance because the board believes the proposed project requires a use variance. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to propose that um, where it starts to say this board finds that the applicant's request for an exception to the number of fair and affordable housing units requires a use variance and not an variance, area variance is requested in the application under review as this board finds that a multi-residential building consisting of five or more units without the provision of the requisite number of affordable housing units is required by chapter 342-50 of the village code is an unpermitted use within the central commercial district of the village. I'm so sorry, but you read that so fast. I know. I'm trying to not be boring. And, and I'm just, I have no idea. And it was like, no good at all. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know. But it's tough. But Can basically, you send it to us? I could. No, would you be able to circulate the language again? Just so I could. I, I'm so sorry. I just, that went yeah, right. Um, can I send it to Betty Ann? Can I send it to you and you'll send it to everybody? Absolutely. Okay. I'm going to do that. Okay. Sorry, I'm all there. Let us know, Betty Ann, when you've sent it, circulated it, so we can look. Absolutely. You just forward it. Just says use variance is what I. When you do get it, I, I I didn't write in, I was keeping the beginning of that paragraph that says, whereas after duly considering all the proofs and evidence before it, that part, I was just going from that part on, was my proposal. Okay, wait, after considering, oh, after considering all the proofs and evidence before, you said it, you're, that's coming before, your language is coming before or after? No, that? that was, yeah, so then I start this board. Oh, okay, that's where you're going. Yeah, so, so what I put in here, I went back and watched that video, which if everyone would like to know was three hours and 15 minutes, I think we spent on this application. Um, and that's actually, so I, I tried to put that language down word for word. Um, so I do I agree that. I think it needs to be flushed out a little bit. I do agree. Um, okay. So what I tried to do was describe what we thought was the unpermitted use, that what the, the the developer had presented to have a multi-residential building without any affordable housing units is not on a permitted use within the commercial district. It's just not allowed. It's not a permitted use to have a completely market rate or multi-residential building. Let me look at the original language. Did everyone get the email? Yeah, I did. Oh, I so the only thing that I did is I, and I don't know how we want to do this, but I essentially crafted it because the board was voting on the fact that they don't believe it's an air vari area variance because they believe it's a use variance. So the board wasn't necessarily voting to say that it was a use variance, if that makes sense. So I don't know. So I, I left it as the board believes the proposed. The reason the board's denying it is because they believe it requires a use variance. I know it's a little bit we odd. Either, we either believe it is or the Could we the say something? voted for it. Say... it uh, I don't know. If I'm not mistaken, I don't think Robin and I thought it was a use variance. No. I understand. You're, you're going to vote against this. Correct. Yeah, to, vote no. So. Correct. We would just vote no on this, on this variance. Yeah. So for those of us who, who are voting say? yes, does it represent the people who are going to vote yes? Is this okay. the reason why you're going to vote yes? Well, I mean, I, had, I thought of, go ahead, Abby. The reason I want to vote yes is because I believe that affordable housing is an inherent right. 
and if it's an inherent right to affordable housing and that our village has supported it, then I believe that it should be a use variance. So, so you're you're not, sorry, go ahead, Meg. Sorry. So you're not finding that the description of this building without affordable, would you be comfortable with saying then, so providing a building that doesn't have any affordable housing units in it is an unpermitted use. Yes. They didn't to me, it's just an extension. You're saying that the village has said you have to have it. And I'm saying the fact that they didn't have it makes it an unpermitted use. Yes. According just to the village just one thing to point oh. out, they didn't propose no affordable housing units. They did propose one. Right. So, so it's just said, without the requisite without the provision of the requisite number. I'm sorry, I've been saying audibly, I'm saying no, but in, when I read, I said the requisite okay. number. Yes. So that's, that's how I think. I think affordable housing is an inherent right and therefore it is a use. A use case. That's it. You know, I, I, you know, I thought of it as more s simply that, you know, and going with just that the, the requested variance did not meet the criteria for an area variance. And that um, the use variance was a more, was the appropriate variance to seek. Then I think that we should explain why we don't think that it, the area variance fits it. I will say that I think that might be the better route. And obviously it's up to the board how, why you're denying us and, and the reason being, but like I said, it, it, it sort of seems like you're denying the area, like the focus of this is the denial to the area variance, right? And I understand that you're denying it because you ultimately think it's a use variance, but I think it might help to flush out a little bit more why you think it's not an area variance. Well, I and thought I, yeah. so I guess we can say it, it doesn't um, fit within the definition of a dimensional or physical requirement. That's that's um, cited in an area variance. Okay. Do you mind adding my language as well, Greta, along with yours as to why it's not an area variance? Um, I mean, I'm happy with your language. I'm happy with Abby's language. Um, but we could say both, why it's not an area variance and that we found mm -hmm. that this thing is an unpermitted use. It's just in case it's challenged, yeah. I want some language there. Um, so both things and why it's not an area variance and why it's but you know, could we, but I don't know if you talk about the jurisdiction, jurisdiction, I don't, since they were seeking an area variance, do we have jurisdiction, jurisdiction to talk about a use variance? Yeah, because there was a determination made about that affordable housing was necessary and that a variance was needed. So it's not, so you're allowed, they applied for an area variance but you're denying them for the area variance and you can talk with that you think it's a use variance that's it so there was ultimately a determination made by the building inspector that you're at the root of it is what you're discussing so it's within your jurisdiction we're not arguing whether or not they they have presented an argument to get a use variance we're not going down there we're just stating that it is a use variance which they didn't apply for okay right. but if you were applying if we were granting a use variance we'd ha have to go through the building inspector's objection again Right. Um, process. But when you're not doing that, you're just denying one because you think it's something else. And that's the reason you're denying it. Denying it's not, it's not an area variance because it doesn't, oh. um, it doesn't have the dimensional and physical characteristics. Yes. And, and that this particular one is an unpermitted use. Mm -hmm. I think I'm a little confused about the unpermitted use part. Can you just talk me through that? A little bit. I 
so you're making a determination that you don't think it's an area variance, right? But what do you mean that you're saying that you feel it's an unpermitted use? I mean, I, I might be a little confused. So we're saying that it needs a use variance. So I'm stating it needs Oh, so a you're use saying variance. it's an unpermitted use, therefore it needs a use variance. Okay, right, right. I get what you're saying. All right. So it's not only, it, it, it's, it, we're denying it, we're saying it doesn't need an area variance, but we're not saying, so just go ahead and build your building. We're saying it's an unpermitted I use. Agree. And, okay. Yeah, I no, I think that's right. I agree with you. And if I may, perhaps another uh, another way to uh, to also address it in the five five criteria for an area variance. One of them is it a self created situation, and do you consider this to be a self created situation? Well, they chose to make a building without any affordable housing in. Yes, and so therefore that would be a reason for being able to deny it based off of New York State law. Yeah, but I think we're not getting into why we would we would give the use variance or not. I think we're just starting to outline the no, fact no. that this is this is for why you this you can you you can deny an application for self created hardship as a, as a denial for area variance. It's one of the one of the criteria it asks. It says whether or not an alleged difficulty was self created, which consideration shall be relevant to the decision of the zoning board, but shall not necessarily preclude the, the granting of the area variance. I don't think the board and Krista, you can confirm, but I don't think the board, if it, it can deny it just because it's self-created, assuming it made all the other findings. Mm -hmm. It's a balancing well, test. But I, I mean, I think it's, I think it's a great point. I think though, I think, um, I think though that. But we weren't applying the balancing test to the area variance. We were simply saying yeah. it's not an area variance. Right. But I guess to the self, created hardship how I mean I will tell you that the argument will be that they were zoning compliant prior to that zoning change and that it was the zoning change that caused the non-compliance so well, right and that's why we're saying it's a use um so I'm just it's that not area hardship. Variance and therefore right if it's a use not area variance we don't even get to the area variance discussion even though i think that that's a really good point about the area variance but it's um we we, we have to start with the use versus area variance issue so i think you've given me two grounds it's up to the board um can't you add, can't you add both can't you put both that's what them? i was saying if you you've given me two grounds if you, if you have more we can add okay. them but I'm, I'm saying that there's well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we've talked a lot about this topic. It's a very complicated topic, but I do think, you know, the village has made clear that they believe that affordable housing is, you know, a, a prior, priority. I believe it's a, it's a right. And if it's a right, it's not something that can be, you know, dismissed as easily as an area variance. Uh, if I may, Miss Mason, um, just having an understanding of how sort of the, the courts work to some degree with Article 78, if someone were to sue the zoning board for making a determination about an area variance, because this is what it sounds like, and it's not based, and the denial is not based on one of the five criteria in which New York State says it is supposed to be based upon. How does that stand? How would that? How would the board fare in a in, in a court? Well, how would the decision stand? Um, I honestly, William, that that would require some additional research as to what that would look like. But I I don't know if this that's a discussion um, for a meeting. But we're not, you know, Are we're you not weighing the, the factors of an area of variance. We're saying it's not, it's it shouldn't be brought before us. We don't see this as a situation that triggers an area variance. So we're not even looking at the factors because it's, it's, it's not appropriate to bring forth. So we're not even going there. Right, but I'm wondering, so are you suggesting though that we should make a determination? We don't believe it's an area variance, but even if it was an area variance here, are the factors no. in here, do think? Is that what we're- No, I don't think we should do that. And no, we, I'm didn't, just asking. we didn't have that discussion. We didn't come up with a balancing act. That would be a whole new new discussion that we have. I also don't know that you could make the findings that it wasn't an area variance. 
based on the findings other than self-created, which probably you couldn't anyway, because it was a change in the zoning after um, they'd submitted their plans and gotten various approvals. So I'm not sure that you could deny the area variance on the area variance factors. So Ms. Mason, well, I mean, well, I don't know. Uh, again, just from my understanding, New York state law says that the zoning board has three options when an application comes before you. The application came before you from what I'm hearing as an area variance. There are only three things you can do. You can deny, you can approve, and you can approve with conditions. And New York state gives very specific criteria as to how you're supposed to make your decision. So if your decision, well, well, we're denying it, but not on the grounds of the balancing act. We're denying it because we're saying it doesn't qualify to be an area variance and that the applicant requires a use variance. So if that's the case, would it be better to ask the applicant to withdraw the application? I mean, didn't we, I think, do we have that discussion with them? Frankly, it's been going on a while and I can't remember. And there was another application where this came up. They, where we, the application, the applicant, if I am not mistaken, and Robin, you can chime in on this anytime you want, indicated that if they weren't going to get the area variance, they were going to go to as of right. Yeah. Oh, that's right, right. So they were going to go to as of right, which is bigger, more units, and a larger impact on the community. That's what they said. Right, but they'll include, they'll include the records of affordable housing. So if you deny the application, would they still not Excuse go to the minute, It was going to be a big box. No, if they deny the application, they will build, they said they would build a complying building. So it would be, they would have the two fair enough, well, they might need more. I don't know how many, I can't remember how many units. I think it was only a few units. So they would build the two fair and affordable housing units. If it right, was an asset they would increase. They would increase the number of units to 21. Right. As of right. So that is three more than what they're proposing to build. The building will be bigger. The building will be ugly. But it but, will include affordable housing. But it that will have the affordable housing that, units, yes. That would be there as of right. And we're arguing over one affordable housing unit. I think we're starting to read. I think we're past plan. that. I think yeah. let us just, I think, uh, I think everybody, I think you've all, right, Meg, Christy, not, no, sorry, not Christy, Meg, Abby, and Greta, you've given your comments to Christy. Christy, you've got them all. I do. Okay, I have one comment on the lapsed variance issue. Okay. Which is that the only reason we're doing it is because there were no changes in the physical um, in anything about the building that they're building. They have been no changes, no changed circumstances uh, to the physical, it's the same okay. building. So you want me to add in a whereas? Yes, about no changes to the size of the building that was previously the subject of the variances. I think we need that because otherwise, I don't see how we can, couldn't, couldn't grant it. Now, I do have another question. If, if the, and this is actually a, a, a Christie question, if the board votes to deny the area variant, oh no, I guess not, because you can deny the area variance for the fair and affordable, grant the others, and they could always change their minds and come back with this existing project and put in two. Okay, never mind. I was had a different question. Okay, go ahead. So go ahead. Um, are we, so we good? Everybody has finished all their comments? No, I have an um, additional comment from okay. the um, left, and that is under, you know, resolve number one, when it allows the um, building inspector to, you know, it says plans filed with the application before the board on July 12, 2018. There'll be in strict compliance, except as may be expressly modified by the conditions herein or approved by the building inspector? No, no, you're right. We um, have to change that. Okay. Um, I, th you know, I suggested, but, you know, other language, except for immaterial modifications. That do um, not as change, approved. yes. What about Except for changes that have no zoning impact as well. No, it's not just a zoning impact. We approved a building that um, has certain things. And while obviously 
there um, could be. We looked at it a certain way and we may have reached some of these. That does not increase the envelope, does not change the envelope, or um, I think that's really the big thing. It doesn't change the envelope or add more units. Um, all right. I don't know if there was anything else, but those seem to me the two things. They don't change the increase the envelope because obviously they can make it smaller and we'd be fine with that. Um, it does not increase the size of the uh, building envelope or um, location of the lot, location of the building on the site or increase the number of units. Right, because immaterial oh, modifications oh, is subjective. Does that work? Writing it down. Well, do you want to add just also to say uh, no material mod modifications and just kind of leave that materiality? Do we care? There? Do we care about something else and material to what? And if you're going to say material, material to what? If he changed, if he decided to, and I know this isn't in the, isn't what they're going to ever do, but I'm just giving you an example. If they decided to make the whole thing fair and affordable, I would say that's a material change, but we'd be perfectly happy to have them do that. So I don't think we want to say material without saying what we have okay. material. That's why I don't want to say material. So I was trying to give specifics, what we cared about. I understand. Okay. Okay. And then my other, my other comment was we had a big discussion last meeting about permits, construction permits, building mm -hmm. permits, you know, what's a building permit. I'm wondering if we could try to be more specific when we say the applicant must obtain a building permit within this time period. Can we specify yeah, exactly what right. permit we need? Yeah, it says that allows for the construction of the development. Or how about allows the construction of the project that required the variance? Now, how about if we say that allows for the complete construction? Of the project that required the variance. Because that's the whole point. It's tied to, we gave variances and you have to get it within a year, you have to get the building permit to build what it was that we reviewed. So I said that they've lapsed because the applicant did not obtain a building permit within one year of July 12, 2018 to construct the project that was before the board when the board initially approved the variances. So that's right, a lapse. And then... I think we're adding a new, what, what Greta is suggesting is adding a new condition, condition. which says that they must obtain a, essentially condition three, but that the applicant must obtain a building permit to permit mm -hmm the complete construction of the um, development before the board, pending before the board, um, within six months of the date hereof. Pending before the board on July 23rd, 2020? I'm, I'm a little confused about that. On the date hereof, the day we're voting, yes. Okay, that was pending before the board within six months. That is pending, that, that is being, that is, right. that is pending before the board. Within six months of the date hereof, and if you want to say well, of July twenty third, does that? I think that solves the problem. Better. The applicant must obtain a building permit that allows for the complete construction of the development that is pending before the board within six months of the date hereof. I don't know that it's pending before the board. The applicant. I, I kind of like maybe just more that the applicant, um, the the uh, building that is. Yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. Language there is. All right. Um I will say that my only concern with the, the resolution right now, and it's hard to do on the fly, um, is I'm just slightly concerned that we haven't flushed out the argument enough about the area variance, it not being an area variance. It's something that I know we talked about a few meetings ago, um, more in depth, and I think it was even talked about before I joined the board. Um, 
so I, I have those two snippets. I think they're helpful. I just want to make sure that it, it's fully fleshed out. Um, I don't know if the board would be comfortable with me kind of going back and looking at um, a little bit of the prior discussion or if you have any additional statements and then fleshing out the, the resolution from there. But that's the only thing that I can think of that I think might need a little. I just I don't think there was more. I thought there was. I was discussing the fact that I think that the way you use the apartment, whether it is it is used, um, what is used at fair and affordable housing, it's mm -hmm. a category. It isn't simply the rate at which it's being rented at, but it has a lot of other prescriptions around it. Mm -hmm. Who administers that? Who I'm just talking out loud. That's obviously not. Um, who is applicable to it, the length of time. And so that's why I was arguing this is not, doesn't have anything to do with the dimension of the dollar amount it's rented for. It actually has a lot of other characteristics surrounding it. And that's why I saw it as a use that is used in a specific way that's been defined for fair and affordable housing. Yeah. I think that's I mean, I would just add, I mean, this is a different perspective, but that, you know, under New Jersey law, affordable housing is considered an inherently beneficial use. But that is not relevant. The inherently beneficial part is not relevant to our determination at all. It's the use well, I part think I think she was emphasizing, that it's a, yeah. a beneficial use is what she was emphasizing. I think, right, Abby? Yes. You're, yeah. That is exactly what I am emphasizing. So I'm looking well, well, that at could other, be, that could be our resolution. Because we have we not do it as an inherently you know. beneficial use. We could state that we find it as a beneficial use to the community. Mm -hmm. I I would love to do that. And let's do it. So can you state the language again? About the beneficial use. So affordable housing is an inherently beneficial use. Okay. To the community or to does it have to be to anybody the use? I think we can say to the community. We want to elaborate on it, yeah. So I'm um, I think that's very helpful. Okay. That's what I remember us discussing that came up in our conversation. What you doing? What you doing, Lulu? You wanna come up and say hello? Come here. <laughs> say hello. <laughs> say hello. Good, good girl. No. She's a kisser. Okay, we're good to go? I think that's helpful, yep. All right, baby girl. Go see mommy. Where's mommy? Go. So what's the process? Who's, are we going to look at it, you know, after Christy makes some changes? Who's going to look at it again to make sure we think it reflects this discussion? We do have a meeting on the 13th. That would mean we would wait to vote to on, on the 13th. Is that correct? Is that too long a time? Is that is that too long a window, Betty Ann? Could, wait to vote the 13th? Oh, I, I don't know. Could Christy give us the resolution and we could independently respond to Christy? I just want to know if we would still be in the time frame if we vote on the 13th rather than if we voted tonight. Let me look. Well, you know, normally, normally not under this new whatever, um, we 
we vote we have previously voted and i reviewed to make sure it was consistent so my suggestion would be that one of the three of you that supports it be charged with the responsibility of ensure that we vote i mean it's up to you but we could vote today um and one of you who you know uh, uh, Greta, Meg, or Abby could take the respons uh, pro responsibility of just ensuring you couldn't make substantive changes, but ensuring that it was consistent with what was discussed today. If you wanted to vote today, that would be one way to do it. Can we just see if it, the 13th is possible, just as an alternative? August 5th is 62 days from June 4th when the hearing was closed. So it would be too long to wait to the 13th, is that correct? Yes. So um, very quickly for this application, and again, I'm, I apologize, my memory is out the window, I guess. Um, but did, did they state that they did not want us to look at whether a use variance, um, they did not want us to review it under a use variance standard? Well, we can. It's not in the notice of violence. I don't violence. think they said that. We, I don't think they said, that. That they said that. So if they didn't say that and the board thinks that it's ultimately a use variance, I, I mean, you're welcome to apply the use variance test. I know that they had right, mentioned- right. We didn't get an objection for a use variance. It's not, it just has to be an objection. It's, this is what I stated earlier. It doesn't, so it's not up to the building inspector to decide whether it's an area variance or a use variance. Wait a minute. We just went through- That was a different part of the code. So he never made a determination as to that other part of that code for that other application. He made a determination as to the part of the code for this one, but, the, but they requested an area variance. The board doesn't think it's an area variance, they think it's a use variance. And so the board is allowed to review it under the use variance standard. You should apply the test that you think is fitting. Fair enough, but if that's the case, does that not, doesn't that change the secret situation? Yes. It could change the seeker, yeah, if you apply it under a use. I believe the applicant had ultimately said that they were going to recourse to a different route if this was not. Right. They'd already told us many times that they had a different plan in mind where they could build the affordable. So it seems like the idea that there's no other way you could make, you could have a profitable use of the space, which is I thought had to do with the use, is, is, um, doesn't hold right. because they, they already told us. Yeah, I mean, Meg is right, so I don't mean to just look for something else. So, I mean, if, if you really want to route out your discussion on the use, you're welcome to look at the factors quickly if you, you want and deny it as a use variance as well. But I think, um, you know, if they've already seen that they're not. I don't think we had a hearing on, on the use variance factors. I don't think we could deny a use variance when we haven't considered it. I, I think, think how we could right. do that. They didn't argue it, so I don't think it's it's right to deny something they didn't argue. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so are we putting it on then for the 13th to vote on the resolution? I, I don't know. What do you want to do? I, I gave you an alternative. If you, oh no, we couldn't. We decided we couldn't right. do it because it be it, the sixty-two yeah, days would be passed. Oh, the sixty-two. Look, the the edits are not. I've already. I, I suggest yeah. Meg, Greta, or Abby pick one of you to review it and make sure it's consistent with what we did today. And assuming it is, it's no different than any other um, application that we have previously voted on. It's written up based on our findings. When I review it, if it's not, I find that it's not. I tell Betty Ann to make changes. So I think the same thing could apply today. <laughs> One of the three of you could review it, make sure it's consistent with what we said, what you said today. And if so, then that would be fine. Um, and then when whichever one of you is reviewing it signs off on it, it still needs to be signed. I would sign it on the chair. I still have to sign it if that's what the board votes. So I would sign it and, and Meg would sign it and we'd be done. Yeah, but we're voting on three. Right. So I'm happy to take on the job of looking at the edits if you guys wanted me to, or happy if somebody else wants to. Somebody else would prefer. I'm, I'm on vacation next week, so thank you, Meg. <laughs> I'm not going to argue that one. Greta, are you okay with Meg doing it? Yeah, of, cor of course. Thank you, Meg. Perfect. So that's what we'll do. So Meg, if you have any edits, you'll send them to Christy. 
um, and when you're satisfied that it is consistent with what the board said tonight, then mm -hmm. you'll tell Christy who'll prepare the final, I'll sign it, you'll sign it, and it will be done. Okay. Well, we've got to vote on it. Well, they're going to vote tonight. Oh, She's okay. Just based on what has been said, but Christy's going to incorporate it in written language, and that's what, so we're voting on it tonight based on all of those comments, but the final written one will just be confirmed by Meg that, yeah, this is right. This is what we discussed. Yeah, so I'll just capture exactly what we talked about, right? And Meg, I'll work with you on that. And then it, it, it's just memorializing the discussion. It shouldn't be too complicated. Okay, okay so we, uh, is, anybody else have any other comments on either portion of the resolution? Okay, so why don't we vote on the um, three resolutions before us? The first one being a determination that the permit had lapsed. Um, uh, so let's vote on that. Uh, do we have a motion to a, to, to a, a motion to determine to, to adopt the first resolution that the permit had lapsed? So we want to make that motion. I'll, I'll make, make the motion. Okay, I'll make the motion. Okay. I second. Meg seconds. Hi, hi Betty Ann. <laughs> you see Betty Ann looking up. <laughs> yes, she looks. Okay, so Meg. Uh, yeah. Greta. Yeah. Sorry, I should have gone with someone who wasn't. Doug. No. You don't think the permit lapsed? No. Okay, no. Abby. The inspector told us that he issued him a building permit when they built that back wall. We yeah, got it, got it Doug. So I vote no. He said he issued it to them. So, okay, um, Abby. Yes. Okay. So it's lapsed. Uh, the second one is to motioned. That's that's what I was. Uh, we made the, mo the motion. Is the motion is a motion to adopt it. Robin made the motion. Oh yes. Yes. Um, Greta, then did Greta vote? Everybody voted. It's four. Okay. Uh, then the second motion, given that the board has been, has uh, said that it's ex that it has lapsed, now the board grants the applicant request to extend. Uh, we decided that. Um, I'll make the motion as well, just so we can move this. Somebody want a second? Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, Meg. No, I think that it's a. Uh, Incomplete application. I think that it requires other variances, so I'm not going to approve these variances because Greta. it has come to light since the time that we actually. Have. Greta. Yes. Doug. Well, since I voted no on the first one, I don't think they need to get new variances. Yeah, it doesn't uh, matter. It doesn't matter. Given that the board has decided that it lapsed, if you vote no, then you're not extending it. So oh, I'll board, vote to extend it. That one I did vote to extend. I'm sorry. Abby? Yes. Okay. So it's been voted. Um, four to one. Different four to one. Okay. Now on the um, last variance, the one for the area variance regarding the two fair and affordable housing units. Someone want to make that motion? I'll make the motion. Someone want to second it? A second. Oh. OK. Meg? Yes. Greta? Yes. Doug? No. Abby? Yes. OK. I am voting no, but I have a formal statement which I am going to read into the record. I disagree with the resolution adopted, being adopted by the board tonight, as I believe that a variance to reduce the number of fair and affordable housing units to be provided is an area variance and not a use variance. Section 7-7121 of New York State Village Law defines use variance as a variance for the use of land for a purpose which is otherwise not allowed or is prohibited by the applicable zoning regulations. Area variance is defined as a variance for the use of land in a manner which is not allowed by the dimensional or physical requirements of the applicable zoning regulations. While the number of fair and affordable housing units does not relate to the dimensions or similar physical requirements, 
the Court of Appeals has previously determined that a variance for the number of required parking spaces is an area variance, saying that, quote, while the change in this case is not strictly one of area, the variance is to be treated as an area variance. Stated differently, the applicant's proposed alteration would conform to the approved uses for business A zones. That's matter of Collin Realty LLC, the town of New North Hampstead. I'm not gonna read the citations or the internal sites. And in Mobile Corp, the, and in Mobile Oil Corp, the village of Mamaroneck, uh, a board of appeals by the second department, the second, I'm sorry, the second court, the court of the New York appellate district for the second department said, uh, quote, the variance sought by the, sought by the petitioner was an area variance, not a use variance, since the petitioner was not seeking to change the essential use of the property. The essential use of the property will remain as a gas station, even with the erection of the canopy. Close quote. So too, in the instant case, the essential use of the property will remain residential, regardless of whether the applicant provides two fair and affordable housing units or one fair and affordable housing unit. To consider this a use variance means that the use of the property for affordable housing is essentially different use than the use as market rate housing. Whether a unit is rented for $100 a month or $10,000 a month or complies with the other standards that are there, the proposed essential residential use remains. The village zoning code makes this clear. Section 342-50.A provides that special permits are required for residence uses on the property that is the subject of this application. Section 342-50B provides requirements for such uses where permitted and subdivision six of such sections, so that's 342-50B6, states that, quote, residence uses must provide fair and affordable housing units in accordance with the following schedule, close quote. The use as recognized by our code is residential and the affordability requirement is similar to the requirements in the same section that there be separate entrance for residential uses and that such use may not be located within 50 feet of certain waterways. Uh, if affordable housing is a right, then the board would have a lot of trouble not being able to even approve anything without affordable housing. I believe that affordable, that I believe that housing is a fundamental right in general, but that does not change the fact that pursuant to our code and New York state law, this is an area variance. The application was correctly submitted as an area variance, and regardless of how much one likes the building that will be built or anything else, it is and remains a residential use. So that is my dissent. Do you send that to me, Chair? Uh, yes, I will submit it in writing. I Thank just you. My, my statement. Thank you. Um, so I vote no with that dissent. I don't know, Doug, if you want to join in my dissent or not, since you voted no. Excuse me? Did you, I don't know if you want to join in my dissent or it's just my dissent, it's like a the court. No, I, I, I agree. I agree. I will join you. Okay. Well, I would like to state for the record that we have, we have lots of zones where we have a residential use and we define it as either a two family or a one family and we consider those as different uses and that to have a multi-residential building that's over five units without any affordable housing is not permitted in the village. So I okay, I will just say that the difference is because the we impact- already heard you and we're now we're just going around in circles. Are you not gonna just keep, we already well, I know, but I was gonna stop when I was done, but if you wanna continue and make a second- No, no, we're not on. having an argument, but you, you prepared a statement, so I made a statement and that's the end. We had all heard what you had said before, Robin, when we had our discussion as well. We're just extending the discussion tonight. We're not going to convince each other that we're-, we're I'm not trying to convince anyone. You made a written resolution that set forth your views. I am giving my written objection that sets forth my views. I have put in writing what I have previously said, just as you, as the affirmative vote did, just like a court does. And that is fine. And that is where it ends. So um, that's going in the record. And we're done with this application now. It's been voted um, and it's gone through. Okay, the next application is to discuss, because we don't have a proposed resolution yet, which is TKIRT. Um, now, before we begin, I want to 
we start consideration and discussion. I want um, to remind the Robin, Michael and I are recused, so can you just give us one minute? Oh, me? I'm sorry. You're yeah, right. Just um, is Lori Lee there? She's, and then um, do you want us to join again? I know this is the last item on the agenda, at least right now, but should we join again? We are might, we gonna do yes, afterwards we might want you if we okay. decide to do any of the closed applications okay. today. So I will I, just- I keep forgetting. I'll, Lori Lee, are you there? Lori Lee is here. Okay, so if Christy and Michael would leave. Um, Lori Lee, if you could, can someone make Lori Lee visible? Yes. Okay, so um, bef before we start consideration of the application, I want to remind the board members that this is an appeal of five violations issued by the village, specifically, and as stated by the applicant, this is the uh, this is what we have before us. Um, uh, to quote from his application, please make the following zoning interpretations on each notice of violation: 19-4655 allowed or caused to allow the creation of an unlawful structure, and he would like a determination that no unlawful structure has been created. The third floor is a permitted rooming unit within the pre-existing dwelling unit B. Violations revoked. The second violation is 19-4656 alteration of one dwelling unit into two. And again, the determination is uh, that he requests is to determine that unit B is one dwelling unit with a lawful rooming unit on the third floor, not two units, violation revoked. The third applicant request is, a, is, is violation 19-4657, alteration of one dwelling unit into two without CO. And the requested determination is that there are not two dwelling units. Unit B is one dwelling with a rooming unit on the third floor. A rooming unit does not require a separate CO violation revoked. Um, next is 19-4658, loss of non-conforming use. And his requested determination is that there has been no cessation of 130 Beach Avenue's longstanding three-family use violation revoked. His final request is with respect to violation 19-4667, non-conforming use altered without permit. And his requested determination is A, a determination that unit B has not been altered as that term is defined in the zoning code, or B, in the alternative, the grant of a special permit to allow a safer stairwell and interior doors. That is what we have before us. Um, um, given there has been a lot now, um, the impact, uh, Sorry, there's been a lot of testimony presented at the hearings about possible ramifications to others in the village if we deny the application, and as well as a lot of information about whether or not the search warrant that was obtained by the village was illegal or not. These two issues are not before us. The impact on the village as a whole is something that is up to the trustees to change if we determine that the unit is a separate unit. Our job is limited to the application before us. With respect to the validity of this, and this is not an area of area, so we do not have to determine impact on surrounding neighborhoods, uh, whatever. With respect to the validity of the search warrant, if the applicant had wanted to challenge the search warrant, he could have had the issue adjudicated in the village justice court, but he chose to come to the board and did not question, I don't know if we would have jurisdiction to discuss the validity of the search warrant. So those two issues are not before us. Given the amount of extraneous information presented, I think I wanna make sure that every member of the board, including myself, feels that they can make an impartial issue decision solely on the five issues before us without these other testimony. And I'm gonna start by saying that I can make an impartial decision without consideration of the search warrant on, or the ramifications on other applicants in the village which questions are not before us. Um, and I will ask each of the other board members to do the same. Meg? Sure, I just wanna say somebody has notified me that we, it seems like we're not broadcasting anymore. I don't know if there's anybody in the village who can make sure that we get back on live. Betty Ann, can you talk to whoever? Or, or um, Nina, can you, whoever is, or, or um, William, or you, can somebody? Please. It shows that we're still that. recording and that we're Not streaming. That, yeah, it shows that we're still live streaming on YouTube. Okay. okay. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't on LMC TV. Sorry. Okay. Yes, I could be impartial um, without considering anything about the search warrant or about the ramifications of additional people renting space. Is that what? Yes. Can you can you make the same? Yes. Yes, I can. Okay, Doug. 
Yes, I can. And Abby? Yes. Okay, so now we have the applicants from the fourth. Anyone want to start the discussion on those five specific requests from the applicant? I, I had, when I looked at the, the notices of disapproval, along with what the applicant had um, argued, it seems that 4653 and 4654 deal with the New York State Building Code. So it doesn't seem that those are ones that we are going to, are under our jurisdiction. They didn't, he didn't appeal them. Okay, so he didn't appeal those. So now we're getting to the creation of an unlawful structure. 144655, 14656, 4657, 4658, and 4667 are the five uh, violations that he is appealing. Okay. Um, they're different, and yet, uh, can I just mention 4655, creation of unlawful structure? I had a little bit of trouble with, with this violation because I know unlawful structure is a term that's used in the New York City, New York State Building Code. I didn't find it in the village code. And I know that the violation was referencing more persons permitted than allowed by law, which perhaps is referencing that there's another person in the space. But it seems to be in terms of health and safety concerns, not zoning concerns. Um, so um, I don't find that this make this makes sense to me because I as I understood from um, what I heard from the building department that nobody said this was an unhealthy or unsafe structure. Um, I also know that according to the village code 342-21B96 that uh, property owners are allowed to rent to one to two rumors or borders. I find this a rumor so it definitely doesn't have too many people in the space. So. Um, I find in terms of the applicant in terms of 4655, the creation of an unlawful structure. I don't think that it's um, unlawful. I don't think that it was, it's un, not health or safety and it doesn't have too many people in it. That seems to be what's involved in the 4655. Uh, um, I think it's probably simpler since most of them are very similar. And uh, if you would just talk about all of the, unless the board wants to do okay. one. That one just to me sort of seemed to be something different because it really wasn't actually talking about a separate dwelling unit. It was talking about whether or not it was health and safety and whether or not there were too many people in it. So, but what you were saying was the same. It isn't a separate unit. Therefore, it really goes to the same issues as. I, I, okay, it's fine. I was thinking it's not the same issue because it's not talking about a separate dwelling unit, that violation 4655. I feel that all the other ones talk about whether or not it's a separate dwelling unit, but for 4655, I thought it was referring to whether or not there's too many people in it and for health and safety reasons. And so I don't find that that is true for 4655. But as to the other ones, they all seem to, to uh, hinge upon whether or not we find this to be a separate dwelling unit. Um, I don't find it to be a separate dwelling unit, mostly because the village code describe separate dwelling unit as being um, something with a complete housekeeping facilities. I don't find um, that it has complete housekeeping facilities because it lacks permanent cooking provisions. It doesn't include a in, uh, installed stove or oven. Um, and I find that that was our precedent in the past. We just saw an application for a home that unplugged the stove and the CFO changed and said, because you unplugged the stove, it's no longer a two family. Um, we've had um, other discussions where we asked whether it was a stove or oven. So that seems to be um, a very fair way to decide whether something is a, a complete kitchen or not, whether or not it has an installed stove or oven. Um, we also ha have looked at the property management code, which says that portable devices such as microwaves are not considered permanent housekeeping facilities. I'm sorry, and where does it say that? The property management code. Can you find me the section that says that? I, I, yeah, I don't have it. Right. 340. I have it. It's 403.3. Yeah, IMPC 2015 section 403.3. And if I look at village code 342-1, it actually says we should be considering, we shall be reading and construed our village code in combination with and not in lieu of other pertinent related laws and ordinances. So I think it's fair to refer to the property management. Uh, property maintenance code? 
That's uh, fine. Thank, yeah. thank you very much. Um, as to locks and doors, um, actually the property maintenance code, is that right? If you can. Uh, section 404.1 actually states that rooming units shall be arranged to provide privacy and be separate from other adjoining spaces. So I actually think that it, it requires um, a door and a lock. Um, I would find it very intrusive when we start telling uh, property owners where they can place an interior door or what kind of lock they can put on the door. Um, I think there's lots of situations where property owners would want to um, section off one section of their house from another. They might have a, an office use, might have a business use, they might have a section they can't have kids in, they might have au pairs, they might have a roomer who wants some privacy and that you would want to put a door and a lock so that nobody else can enter that. Um, so I don't find that just the fact that you have a door, an interior door or lock makes something a separate dwelling unit. Um, also, just uh, I don't think that we would be in conflict with the board's determination uh, regarding the STEM application, which was denied, as that was to make the third condo unit um, a third condo unit, which actually could be bought and sold and would have its own title of ownership, wouldn't be limited to just one or two roomers or boarders, would actually could be occupied by a family who could then rent out to one or two boarders themselves. That's a whole different situation. So that's what the board had found, that they did not want to allow an, a third condo unit. They did not determine whether or not they by putting a, an interior door or lock on the on some section of the house would make it a separate dwelling unit and that that would not be code compliant. So um, I feel that for 4656, the alteration without a building permit, um, I don't think that it was altered. I think that you put a door and a lock on. I don't think that that's an alteration. I think that alter means to change or rearrange existing facilities or structures or talking about the supporting members of the structure. I don't think that alter would mean that you put a door on, on, a, on a specific hallway or space in your, in your, uh, in your property. Uh, 4658, loss of conforming use. Um, he didn't create a separate dwelling unit. So I don't, I think that he's, Mr. Teeker's continuing to live in the space that he had was a, uh, a conforming and pre-existing non-conforming use, which is the, the, or it's the condo dwelling and he hasn't changed that and hasn't altered that. And uh, so that also 4667, um, it's not a separate dwelling unit. So he didn't alter a non-conforming use without permits because it's still a non-conforming use. Okay, uh, and Greta, anyone else have any thoughts? I'll, I'll, thoughts? that they want to add to or say in addition to Meg? Yes. Um, I'm going to state an alternate position. Okay. Mr. Teekert came before this board and he admitted that he built an apartment for his mother. An apartment on the third floor. It has its own private electric meter, its own private entrance, and he built walls. So did he build an apartment? By his own admission, he did. Did he construct the walls and put the doors up? By his own admission, he did. So it is a separate unit. You can't tell me when he took the stove out because nobody knew the stove was there to begin with. That stove could have come out two days before the building inspector got access into the space to check it out the wire was still sticking through the wall where the stove was connected. So is it in fact a, an apartment? Yes, it is. Was it built in violation of what the rules are? Yes. Did he get a building permit? No. He built an apartment, never got it inspected, no electrical, no structural, no mechanical. Are the walls, is the wall dividing that building rated to make it safe? I don't know. I don't know how it's constructed, but you know, everyone's saying, no, it's not an apartment. Yes, it was. He built a separate apartment for his mother. Then he rented it out to other people. You're saying, well, it's a rumor, border. Okay, if you look at it from the terms of what Mr. Teekert had said through the number of times that he appeared before the board, first of all, the first time he appeared, he says, well, the border doesn't need a stove. He rarely cooks. It's, it's, 
got a little hot plate. Then he appeared on another time and said, well, no, he actually has a key to my apartment in answer to, I forgot who asked him the question, in answer, no, he has a key to my apartment and he comes in and uses my stove and cooks for both of us. These, you can go back to every one of the meetings and you can see what happened. So, Meg, I disagree with you about it being an apartment, his own admission. And if you look at his documentation, he calls his third for person a tenant, not a rumor. His submitted documentation in the paperwork calls him a tenant. Now, you had argued that, well, he didn't construct it to be like the third floor condo that was supposed to be built. That was only because of an exterior outside entrance. That entire thing was built except for that outside entrance. It's isolated, own power, it, an apartment, the stove came out. I don't know if the stove came, when did the stove actually come out? Nobody knows. All we know is that the building department was denied access to go up there and to look into that space. And then when they finally got into that space, here's the 220 line sticking through the wall with the, where the stove was. And the space between the cabinets is still there. So how you can argue that it wasn't an apartment and it isn't an apartment doesn't hold water. Mr. Teeker turned around and said, hey, you know what? The village manager said that it's not an apartment. I think that was the statement, okay? But if you continue to read the line below, it said, but, however, yes, it is illegal non-conforming because Mr. Teeker's own statement above said it was a tenant. So, you know, I mean, you can skew the, you know, I mean, you look at it in a dozen ways and I'm not even looking at the building code. I don't, I'm not paying attention to the building code whatsoever. I'm paying to the attention to the documentation and the conversations that were held before this board and what was attested to. That's my position. It is an apartment, no matter how you slice the pie, because if it was taken and nobody knows when the stove was taken out, but the application was what? 2000 and what? When was the inspection done by the building department to determine that Over. there was a stove there and everything else? That was well after, that was well after the multiple use law, multiple dwelling law was brought into place. Well after that, the multiple dwelling law says, quote unquote, hey, you don't need a kitchen to be classified a dwelling unit. And as far as rumors and borders are concerned, the definition of a rumor and border is found under family in the village code. You, that's where you will find it. That means living together, sharing the identical space and the identical facilities. And that's not what's happening in that, in that unit. What I think should happen, I think that we should uphold what the building department did and have Mr. Tika go through the appropriate channels if that's what he's looking to do. And that's nothing more than, hey, you know what? Go through the channels and get it done and put it before the other boards and, make it, and have them make a determination whether or not you should be able to proceed with that or not. To circumvent the building department and say, no, I just, no, I think that's the approach that we need to take. I'm not saying, you know, he can't have it. I'm saying that go through the appropriate channel let him go through the appropriate process and let it be done that way. Greta or Abby? Uh, I'd like to, I agree with Meg and I'd like to just add a couple points. The uh, property, New York Property Maintenance Code, when it defines dwelling unit, I'd like to read the definition. A dwelling unit is a single unit providing complete independent living facilities for one or more persons, including, and this is an important word, permanent provisions for living, sleeping, eating, cooking, and sanitation. Permanent provisions. Permanent provisions would not include countertop appliances. 
countertop appliances are by definition not permanent. Um, also, looking further into the property maintenance code, cooking facilities, it, when talking about rooming units, it specifically exempts coffee pots and microwave ovens as not being considered as cooking appliances. And one can read that also a toaster oven and other countertop appliances also would not be cooking appliances. The New York Property Maintenance Code is pretty clear on what's a dwelling unit and what's not a dwelling unit. And it also defines rooming unit. I forgot to say that. A rooming unit is a room or group of rooms forming a single habitable unit occupied or intended to be occupied for sleeping or living, but not cooking purposes. So the key issue really has to do with cooking. Is, are there co permanent cooking facilities or not? And the, the unit did not have permanent cooking facilities when it was inspected. And in terms of the evidence of whether there were permanent cooking facilities or not, we had an affidavit by Mr. Steinkamp saying that it didn't have a stove top or oven. That is evidence that we received. And we also have the information from Mr. Steinkamp, also from Mr. Teeker, saying that there were, weren't any. And as the execution of the search warrant, there were none. They didn't find any. So that is the evidence that there were no permanent cooking facilities at the point that the search was done. That's it. Are you finished, Greta? Yeah. May I, res may I respond, Robin? Um, with respect to the code, you will read in every book of every of the United of the New York State Code, the more stringent rules govern. And if the local municipality has more stringent rules and regulations than the code, then the, those rules and regulations govern over any code. It's the way it is. Okay, but they were Mr. Teekert's place was inspected in 2018, Frank, 19? When did you finally get into inspect it? 2019. 2019, okay. So now, in 2019, the multiple dwelling law was in effect It was in effect. The dwelling, multiple dwelling law of this village states it doesn't have to have a kitchen to be classified a dwelling unit. And because it was found in, at, because the place was inspected, it falls under the current code that is in place. Doesn't matter whether it was 10 years ago, 15 years ago, it was constructed illegally. The walls were constructed illegally. That space was isolated illegally. They didn't get a building permit to put those walls up, put that door up and isolate that. And an apartment was built there, as I said, for his mother to occupy. That in effect, and with it being taken care of, found this year, the multiple dwelling law is the law that governs. And the multiple dwelling law says, quote unquote, you don't need a kitchen to be classified a dwelling. It's what it is. Doug, does so, the multiple dwelling law cover condominiums? I don't believe it covers condominiums. It does. It does. Con it, does. it does. Multiple dwelling law covers hotels too, by the way. It covers right. a lot of things. Oh, it covers tons of things. Um, but in effect, if you think about it, 2019 multiple dwelling law was in effect. Multiple dwelling law says, I don't care whether you got a stove or not. It's a dwelling unit. It was constructed and it is. 
That's why I'm saying we should let Mr. Tinker go through the real process through the building department and all of those pieces. We shouldn't let anybody just circumvent and go around it because that's what they want to do. We have an obligation to make sure that it's done the way it's supposed to be done. You can go right through the, you can go right through the building department, put in the applications, and it can be handled through there. But I think that is the best approach that we need to take. Do you have thoughts? Otherwise, I'll give my thoughts. Do you want to go first or do you want to not? I don't know. Do you have anything to say? Otherwise, I'm going to give my comments of the... You and I are the two people who haven't spoken yet, so that's why I'm asking if you have anything you want to say. Um, I do have some comments. I do have some thoughts. So... You go ahead. Um, yeah, you go ahead. Okay, I agree with Doug. Um, but I have to explain why, because I don't agree with all, with, uh, with, I agree with him in, in total, but I have additional points to make. And I'll make the following points. So first of all, we start with our code. Our village code says a dwelling unit is a building or self-contained portion thereof containing complete housekeeping facilities for only one family, okay? So this is, if this is a dwelling unit, then only one family. Um, and having no enclosed space or cook in common with any other dwelling unit. But we know that there are enclosed spaces in common with the use above. So if it is one dwelling unit, then the occupancy by Mr. Steinkamp has to be permitted some other place. So occupancy is permitted an accessory use here. So what is one family? A family is one or more persons occupying a dwelling unit and living together as a single housekeeping unit. They do not, Mr. Steinkamp and Mr. Tinker, do not live together as a single housekeeping unit. Okay, so if it is a dwelling unit, then the use by Mr. Steinkamp would have to be permitted. Rooming units, which Mr. Tinker has said exists, are not a permitted use under our code. They're just not a permitted use. They're not listed in the code. And the fact that they may be permitted under the property maintenance code doesn't make them permitted in our village. So a rooming unit is not a permitted use. So how do, what are the other things that Mr. Tinker has said? He has said they're a rumor or a border. I spent a lot of time trying to find out what rumor or border was. Um, and the last time I found, uh, you know, I, 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 I spent a lot of time on, because uh, I was interested in trying to figure this out, I spent a lot of time on Lexis trying to figure out if there's any case law defining rumor or border. Um, and the last time that the decision, the, the consideration actually came into play was in the early 20th century or the late 19th century, citing a series of case, several cases. And I, honestly, I was too confused by the case um, but there is a, a, a decision which cites all of these 19th century cases. But the bottom line is a rumor or border, when you read the other case, other, any other case, there's no case that defines it, um, is essentially someone who uses a portion of your house. Someone who uses a portion of your house. You rent them a room, they have a room. Maybe they have a separate bathroom, but that's it. They don't have a separate apartment. They, it's not a separate apartment. They don't have separate entrance. Uh, Meg said we couldn't put in something about doors, but we've already done that. La a couple of months ago, we approved another um, uh, uh, unit and we required that there be no separate ex no entrance outside so no exterior entrance that you didn't have to go through the main house to get to the second floor unit where the grandparents parents were living we specifically required that so we could require that it seems to me that oh so um then we get to what our code says is complete the whole issue of cooking facilities i have a cookbook and my cookbook is titled Microwave Cooking. There is virtually nothing you can do that does, is, cannot be done in a microwave or on an electric frying pan. I don't know if he has or other things. Um, to me, the fact, there's no case law anywhere that says you have to have a stove. Now, the portion of the property maintenance code that both Greta and Meg referred to, and I have to go there to tell you, um, and uh, let me go back to it. 
A rooming unit is a room or group of rooms forming a single habitable unit occupied or intended to be occupied for sleeping or living purposes, but not for cooking purposes. Um, and then you go to the section that Meg quoted, which was about rooming units, right? It was, unless approved through the CFO, cooking shall not be permitted in any rooming unit. But as I've said, rooming units are not permitted in the village of Mamaroneck, so it doesn't matter. And to the extent that we want to use um, these exceptions, this is trying to say, because rooming units do not allow cooking facilities, it is saying, Rooming units don't allow cooking facilities, but we're going to allow microwaves anyway in the rooming unit. But the rooming unit isn't allowed here. So do I think, to me, whether or not there's a stove, you know, and if we've done it before, perhaps it wasn't right. We've certainly required locks on, that there not be outside locks. Um, here, it, to me, it looks like a, a, an apartment. It meets the code requirements of an apartment. The only issue is whether or not it has a stove in every other respect. There's a separate door. He goes up. Uh, Mr. Steinkamp or any other tenant would go up the stairs, has a key to his. Yes, they, Mr. Um, he has all of the separate, as Doug has pointed out, a separate own electric meter. Um, it's not a part of the, it's he's not a rumor or, or border. He is a, it is a separate apartment, cooking facilities, nothing in there requires. To me, it looks like an apartment. It feels like an apartment in the way it's configured. And to me, it is a separate apartment. And then I would deny Mr. Um, Tinkert's, the four um, variances. Now Meg raises a really interesting one about the first one, which is no unlawful structure has been created. But um, if, so, so that's, it, it is an interesting point that's distinguishing it, but it seems to me that it's unlawful because it's not permitted. So therefore it is an unlawful structure. So I do think it, so I would deny all of Mr. Tickert's variances. Uh, sorry, Mr. Tickert's appeals. <clears throat> I know it's Abby's turn. I just want to say really short. Uh, Go ahead. Couple of things. Go ahead. Um, first that you quoted what a family is. And so we have a difference of opinion of what is a housekeeping unit. So it looks like I'm saying that he uses the kitchen. He doesn't have a full kitchen. He goes downstairs to cook. He has the, the use of, the, of that kitchen anytime he likes. Um, and so that's why they are sharing a housekeeping unit. So we have a difference of opinion there. You're, not, you're saying they're not one single housekeeping unit. I say they are. And it also says a family can be two unrelated people as long as they're living as one single housekeeping unit. So that's 342-3. So it's whether or not you think it, because there's no stove and oven up there is that, you know, that this is where we're coming down to having a difference of opinion. Um, also, when you refer to the other application where we talked about doors and things, we actually changed it. So we didn't change it, but the application that we approved that it didn't say you have to have uh, no separation or nothing that could separate one floor from the other. We changed that. So I don't know what you're referring to. We talked about locks on doors, but we, we said nothing about the fact that you are not allowed to, to, to separate two spaces. That was not I didn't in the say that. I said it was about the lock. You said we couldn't do anything about locks. And what I'm saying is, yes, we absolutely have. But I did want to say sorry, one thing. I'm sorry, just, I didn't say we can't do anything about locks. I'm saying that the fact that he put a lock on an interior door, to me, does not say, oh, that makes it a separate dwelling unit that we have many, many times that we have put locks on interior doors for many good purposes. You could have your art studio in there. You could have your law office on one side of the building and you could put a really heavy duty lock on something if you had a lot of valuables in it. There's many, many reasons. So the fact that you put a lock on a door is not to me a characteristic of creating a dwelling. Uh, I just, I wanna to go to one thing, which is your comment about not more than two unrelated persons living together as a single housekeeping unit. There is a ton of case law on that. And the case law makes clear what the single housekeeping unit is. It doesn't mean that they have one stove that they share. A single housekeeping unit is something that looks like a family. You have uh, people who live together. They shop together. They buy their groceries together. A two people, a couple is, you know, two men, people living together, a couple, two people of whatever sexes they are, who live together as a couple. They share, they clean the one apartment that they have. It does not 
refer to, and there is a lot of case law on it, it does not refer to the situation we've got here. Very clearly the case law talks about what a single housekeeping unit is, and it is people who behave as, because the theory being that if it looks like a family, then you treat it as a family, no matter how many people you've got there. So that but anyway, it, Mr. Teekert was not claiming it was a family. He was claiming that he has one rumor in his space. I understand, but you're referring to the definition of family as a, as, you're referring to the definition of family as talking about not more than two unrelated persons together. You, as brought, a single you, brought it up. Unit. you brought it up that even when I look at that, I don't have a problem with this application. So that's what, but that's actually not what Mr. Teekert referred to. He just said he okay. has one rumor, it says rumor or border, and you're right, there's lots of different ways of looking at what's a rumor or border. I know that we have two terms. We, if it's two terms, it must mean two different things. I assume border means food. I mean, rumor means you're, you're renting the space. It doesn't mean anything to do with food. Uh, okay, Abby, do you have anything to say or any thoughts on what, which way you go since we seem to be, I hate to put it on you, but yes, we seem to be two and two. Seems like a habit. Okay, so I look again, I think this is a very complicated issue. So my first thought is that I really would say that I think the board that this should be clarified, right? Because it's ambiguous. And I think we would need some clearer criteria than the ones we're being given because complete housekeeping facilities is everyone who's listened to these calls for the last couple of months can go anywhere. And I don't think it's helpful. And I don't think it's particular, yes, I don't think it's helpful. And I think we need clear lines here um, because it's too ambiguous um, to my mind. And I'm not comfortable with that. And I don't think any of us are because we're arguing about an oven and a door lock. Um, so, so I wanna say that first of all, that I would like it to be noted that we should clarify this issue because I think it's an important one to clarify. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I struggle because I do feel like an oven is something that is often looked at as the determining factor when you are looking at a separate dwelling unit at the same time um, as Doug has laid out. Um, there, you have everything but the but the oven in this case, right? So it seems a little bit like a fig leaf almost, you know? Um, so, so I do struggle with it on those grounds. Um, I think at the end of the day, I do come out on, um, on the side of, of Robin and, and Doug that it is, it is a it is a dwelling unit, but I I do that, you know, saying that we need more guidance. I think that's correct, and I think the village code um, should would be good to be changed. I I do want to say add one more thing about stoves. My daughter lived for four years in China, um, and she didn't have a stove. She had her own apartment. She didn't have a stove because most people in China don't have stoves. Um, it is not needed. It isn't any of that. He just didn't have it. So the non-existence of a stove, you know, to, to me, it just doesn't mean it's not cooking facilities. Right, but on the flip side of that, Robin, I have a microwave in my basement so I can heat up tea when I'm Correct. cooking, you know, when I'm, I'm working down there. Does that mean that I have an illegal, you know, apartment down there because I work there and I have a microwave? Like, you know, so that's part of the complication. No, no. Oh, absolutely, it's, it is no, there's no defined, the definitions in all the laws are very difficult in large part because a lot of these laws have not been rewritten for I don't know how many years. I think Since we owe it to our, you know, our citizens to to have that clarified because, you know, this is very ambiguous. I think it's worth asking the board of trustees to look into that issue. And that would be a reasonable thing to do. I would like to just point out to 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 Abby who seems to be working on this that in generally in in zoning law when we're looking at it and there is ambiguity, the precedent is to find for the applicant if you're on a, on a borderline, if you're not sure, if you feel like the terms are not clarified for you, you can't find enough precedent, 
we usually find for the applicant. So we could find for the applicant and then push this towards the BOT to say, we don't want this to happen again and we need some clarification. Well. If anybody else doesn't have anything. Abby, um, I'm gonna agree with you. We do need better terms and definitions. You know, and I, I think that Robin, we need, we need to ask for very specific types of definitions when, when it comes to uh, uh, the code, our code, the village code. And absolutely. We, we probably, need the trustees to do that. Yes, so you're absolutely. saying that you're, you we need, need more direction, that. it's more specificity, but you're not ready to say that it's an ambiguous situation. Correct. Did, you're I, saying I, it's an ambiguous situation, but you're definite that this is this. I don't think it's thing. ambiguous. I think it's very I clear. Just, I think that it would be great if it were clearer for everyone to understand. Um, right. Okay, I just think it would make it a lot easier if we had definitions, um, more in-depth definitions within, within our code. But uh, it, to me, it's, it's not ambiguous at all. Yeah, I agree. At the end of the day, you know, if you look at the totality of the circumstances, it's not, not ambiguous to me. It is, however, I, I mean, the whole reason we're debating it as much as we are, though, I think is because, you know, the there needs to be a list of clear factors to look at, you know, um, and I've been, yeah. So, so that it doesn't so that it doesn't come up in the future for anyone else. And I think it's up to us to provide the Board of Trustees with that. Right, right. I agree. Um, all right, I will make, a, since, since uh, someone has to make a motion, I will make a motion that we deny all of the variances because based on the totality of the use, the way the property is being used, uh, it is being used as a separate dwelling unit um, and therefore, it's a, an, it's a separate dwelling unit and therefore um, he's altered it without getting the appropriate permits. This is an alteration, just going to the question of whether this is an alteration. An alteration is defined in the code as to change or rearrange the existing facility of a, facilities of a structure. I would say that changing the walls, adding a door, all of that is changing the existing facilities of a structure. So he did alter the structure. Um, so he did alter it into two, um, and he and has a uh, with he doesn't have a CMO uh, that he has um, loss of non-conforming use. I don't think that um, I don't think he loses the non-conforming use. I think that he's he has a non-conforming use for a two-family. I don't think anything changes. Uh, you know, the existing non-conforming to family, I think, remains in his building. I don't think anything changes that. I think this is an illegal use. If he's going to continue the use, it's just an illegal use. I don't think that makes the two family use necessarily a loss. So I would maybe approve, uh, grant him that approval. Um, and he did alter a non-conforming use without a permit based on the fact that he created a separate dwelling unit without getting the appropriate permission. And I make it very simple. I would also, I, I just want to remind everyone that in the last meeting, the building department said that he could remedy this by simply removing the lock off of that door. I think, yeah, if that's what he said, but that's up to the building department to determine how we can uh, No, that is what the building department said, Robin. So I'm just reminding everybody. Okay. And he, he needs to get the permits that, uh, what Correct. you're claiming. Correct. And he would need to get all the permits he needed to do the alterations. He needs to get the permits and the inspections and, every, and everything else. Right. I'll um, second that. Okay, Meg. Uh, no, I, I don't vote that way. Uh, uh, Greta. Oh, wait. I think we're going to do what we've done in the past, the last few meetings, which is we have this tentative um, resolution. Lori Lee, if you would write that up based oh, on what sure. we said, and then right. we'll vote. So taking this, we're only going to take a straw poll tonight. 
but let's do that anyway, so sorry. This is not the vote, this is a straw poll for Lori Lee to prepare the resolution based on what we said. Meg. So I'm voting uh, no in opposition to denying the applicant. Right, here. Greta. We can't hear you. Unmute, Greta. Unmute. Unmute. Greta, Greta you have to unmute you. yourself. Greta, you're muted. Oh, there you okay. go. Now she's good. Okay. Okay. So, um, with respect, I agree with respect to um, denying the loss of the non-conforming use, but then I disagree with the. I'm sorry. I forgot, I forgot that Robin had kind of mixed that. So. I, 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 yeah. Okay, Doug. Uh, I vote with you, Robin. Yes. Okay, and Abby. Yes. Okay, so um, if you will draft something up and have it for the next meeting, yes. I mean, have to send it out before so we can look at, and they'll have it for the next meeting. Yep, I'll get it. I'll get it out to you in advance. Do you have a deadline where you'd like to see this? At least a week before. Okay. And what is your next meeting date? Betty Ann, you must know this. The 6th, is it September? Betty Ann, you're on you mute. Yeah. You I just said, oh, I'm muted. September 10th. <laughs> September 10th? Is the next meeting. Okay, and you're gonna stick around for that one, right? To help me out? Uh, sorry, no. Um, <laughs> Not happening. Um, do, I heard you were saying. Oh darn. Do we don't need an extension or anything, do we? No, because you haven't drank. You haven't taken a vote. It's it's just straw poll. But the hearing was closed at the last um, meeting. So on sixty-two days. On an interpretation, is it all? The, is it oh? Is it sixty-two days across the? You board? tell us. <laughs> You're I thought. Good. Public hearing was closed. I wasn't sure if yeah, it was. Yeah, but I don't know. The question, the question is whether it's the same 62 days for the Hey, Robin, can we go also make a recommendation to the board that we get this dwelling unit issue clarified? I think we have to do that separately. Right. Um, but I think we can do a formal um, letter. And, and in fact, if you want to draft something, do you have time to do that? I don't know if you do. I'm asking. Yeah, no, I'm going on vacation. Oh, you're going? Yeah, yeah but we're not coming staff back until drafting. September. Yeah, staff will draft it. Staff will draft it. That's that what we're going to Thank you. That would be really helpful. I what think what that he, really I'm sorry, I didn't hear what he said. Staff will draft it. Okay. Um, did you want to entertain mm -hmm. it? And I don't mean to push, but you are having another meeting on the 13th. If we're posting an agenda, I'm just throwing it out there. Well, I'd rather leave that, that meeting short and sweet. Okay. But it's up to the rest of you. You want to vote on it the next time, we can vote on it the next time. Can we have it in time for that? And do we have to uh, notice well, it? Well, are you, you're not going to be, wait, Abby, are you going to have time if you're going to be on vacation next week? If I, will I have time for what? If, if, if we vote on this at the next, meeting which is the 13th will you and you're out next week would you have time to review the draft resolution before the next meeting or would you rather leave it until um no i i, I have time that's fine i was suggesting also uh, that we get a recommendation that the board give us you know more specific criteria that's all as a separate well, more specific oh yes that, 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 but yeah we're not talking about that one now we're talking about the other issue yeah no that's fine Okay, so if you can, can you have, can you do it like by the, so this would be, since the meeting is the 13th, we'd want oh, it by the 6th. I, I'm I actually realizing 62 days from June 4th is the same problem we had before. Yes, but the question is, this is an appeal, this is not a variance. The first question yes, is, sir. does that apply? That, that's what, I, that saying. was my question. I don't have your code, your, <laughs> I have your zoning code, but I don't have your uh, general code. It's not in our general code, it's in our zoning code. I'm in, looking right now. It's in village code. 
it's in but it's in the zoning, zoning provision. It's not in a different provision of the zoning code. Is it? You're, mu you're muted, Mr. Long. It's either in the zoning code or it's in village law as to... Um, right, it's in the zoning code. So I think, well, I'll look, if you're looking at zoning code, I'll pull up the village law. Yeah. And look, which I had open before, so hopefully I still have it open. Laws of New York. There we go. Village. Okay, method of procedure. Court of Appeals procedure. An appeal shall be taken within 60 days. So that's, no, that's yeah. I understand that I'm just reading this as I'm yeah. reading it. Yeah. Oh, I feel so inept. Filing each court of a no, I don't see anything in here about, oh wait, there it is, hearing on appeal, we shall hear, shall we? oh, nope, 62 days. The Board of Appeal shall decide upon the appeal within 62 days after the conduct of said hearing. Right. So that's in the village law. So 62 days from June. Fourth is August 5th. So it's, it's up to, so Mr. Tinker can, um, can grant us the extension or get a default denial. In this case, he may not care because it's a denial either way, um, pretty much. So it's up to him. So can somebody reach out? So what, uh, can somebody, I don't know if he's, he's listening that, tonight. But, but you also were not going to uh, deny his, his non-conforming use. You didn't find that. I understand that, but it's up to him. We, he's either, it's, um, it's either, a, a, either a, a, he's and not we, we just, we're considering all of these as a group because they're all related to each other. So we either get a denial, we either get an extension of all of them or we get a no extension of all of them. So it's up to Mr. Tinker what he wants to do. Um, he is not, He's not um, present. He's not present. So I think what we should do is let's tentatively leave this. Betty Ann, if you would reach out to him tomorrow. Yes. Because he doesn't have a lawyer. He appeared by himself. So if you would reach out to him tomorrow, ask him what he wants to do. If he wants to, if he doesn't want to give us the extension, then let, let us all know what he says. If he doesn't want to give us the extension, then Lori, then do, we don't write a default denial. We don't write anything. It's just no. deemed denied. Okay, so Betty Ann, please reach out to him tomorrow and let Lori Lee and the rest of us know what we're going to do. So are you looking to have a draft by the 6th or are you looking to have a draft for your September meeting? I think everyone would like to, I mean, the, you know, we talked about the 6th. We'd like to have it on the 6th. For the for the thirteenth, a special meeting on the thirteenth. Correct. Right. Okay. And and that will be notice, separate notice. Yes. A special meeting. So yeah. Yes. Yeah. I, I don't even have to ask. It's Betty Ann. Okay. Um, so I think we're done with everything that's listed. Now we have some closed applications from today. We have the, um, so first we have the, uh, the mo so if everyone's okay, at least, thanks, Lori Lee. If you would let, um, oh, Christy is back. Okay. Um, Christy, so I guess I'd like to vote on certainly on the applicant's request for an extension of time to file the special permit. For the modern on the rails extension of time, I'd like to vote on that tonight. At least it should be short and simple. It should be quick. I don't know how we're going to vote, of course, but it should be quick. Um, 
So does any, anybody have any thoughts about that? What you want to do, grant it, deny it? This is not granting the special permit. We can deny the extension of the special permit. All we're saying is that it's okay that he didn't right. make no, I, it. Yeah. We, should, we should let him, we should grant him the extension to uh, apply for a special permit. Do you want to make that as a motion, Doug, please? Yes, I make a motion that, uh, what is it? Modern on the rails? Yeah, be granted yes. an extension of time to apply for a special uh, for a renewal of this special permit. Is there a second? A second. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, the fact that he didn't have any complaints so far leads me to feel positive about giving him an extension, and then we'll review it again. Yeah. To me, the it, it, I have to say that the fact this is the whole coronavirus thing does make a difference to me too. I think people. We're not necessarily knowing what was going on for a while. So I think it was, you know, especially businesses like restaurants that would have been closed and probably forgotten about a lot of things. Um, so, okay, so let us vote, anyone else? Okay, Meg, let's vote on the motion to approve yes, it. I, I vote yes to approve the extension. Greta? Yes. Abby? Yes. Doug? Yes. And I vote yes. So they have the extension and we will hear the actual application in next, um, in September. Now we have two other applications before us tonight. Um, the Hampshire Club and we can't vote on the Hampshire Club tonight because we are waiting for that certification that they asked for. But I suggest that we can get a, um, we can make a tentative vote, a straw poll tonight so we can have the resolution written up so we can vote on it next time, assuming that somehow or another the circuit doesn't say, oh, by the way, I have um, whatever, something that we can't, couldn't, uh, you know, that was raised many issues for us. So um, does, uh, is, so I, I would, that's what I would recommend, that we come up with a straw poll tonight. We do, and since we're not voting anyway, assuming that no significant, you know, there's no material issues raised by the certification. Um, and then we vote on it at the next meeting when we'll have the certification. Does that sound okay to everyone? I know, Abby, you can't vote, you're recused. Um, so we will not ask you for your vote or discussion. Um, does at Meg, Greta, Doug, does that sound okay? Sounds okay to me. Okay, so what, uh, it, seem, I mean, it seems to me that there's been no complaints. Um, and while you know non-member events and lots of them is always an issue, and granted the points you raised were really very good, but I think if we're asking the board, I think the problem of non-member events has been an enormous problem, and how it's defined is an enormous problem. And if we're asking the board of trustees, and I could swear we asked the board of trustees that this issue came up before, and we previously asked the board of trustees to deal with it. I, I don't know that we ever formally did. We may have only done it in the meeting and said, Board of Trustees, please do something. But I would say we absolutely need the Board of Trustees to fix that definition. I agree, and, but I was also struck by that when they had listed brunches and things like that in the past, and that had been approved or not questioned by the ZBA in the past. So until we get a new definition in our code, I didn't see how we could really rule any differently. Although I thought Greta was asking very pointed. I thought it was a very good point that she made. I mean, I think the problem is the way the code reads, events, what is an event? They call it an event if they announce it, you know, I don't know what it is. Um, As so, you said, the fire out becomes an event. You know? So yeah, so I don't know what event is. So um, I do, I think that the code, I think the trustees really need to. Right, but I was thinking about the precedent. If we've, if we've let them have that list in the past, I don't see how without a new new definition we could, and, and, and telling them that it's a new definition that they're operating under. We could do it for the next one if the board changes its vote. Now, I mean, if the board comes up with a different definition now, that would apply to the next one, and that would be fair. Um, uh, Greta, do you have any thoughts? Well, you know, I, I, I think this interpretation of the definition allows any club to inflate the um, denominator so that it becomes a totally meaningless provision. You know, you can have a Friday night buffet, you can have a Sunday brunch, you can have a Wednesday fish fry. You know, you can, you can inflate that denominator so that this, this, this provision is 
totally meaningless. Well, I would say the provision so is totally. I, um, I would say the provision is totally meaningless for a very different reason, and I've always thought this. Um, but we have it in the code. Um, I say the provision is meaningless because of the, and I'm trying to find the section, the way it defines what a non-member event is and the way we have always interpreted it, right? A non-member event is an event that is not financially guaranteed or hosted by a member. That means if I am a member of a, a 5,000 person organization, and I have the organization come, Robin, and if I were a member of the club and I had Robin Kramer sponsors a 5,000 whatever person event, I don't have to do anything else. I call it as being a host. Anyone can host anything. All they have to do, I could host some, I could host someone else's wedding. I, I'm my, you know, my best friend's daughter is having a, is, is getting married, let's say. Um, and so I decide to host it. That makes it a member event. So I think the whole definition is just right. It would have to be the, who paid for it. Like you would have to say that this is the person who but actually that's not what, paid the so bill. I, yeah. As it is, it's just so, the hosted by is so meaningless that I agree that the provision means nothing, but the problem is, it's because it's too broad. It's too broad and nonspecific. So, um, Staff, if, if the board would like, staff will include a definition of an event in its recommendation to, um, you know, when drafting the recommendation letter, uh, recommendation letter or referral letter to the uh, village board. Absolutely. Right. A definition of an event and a, def a definition of a member event and a definition of a non-member event. Right. A better, def a, 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 a more detailed definition. Okay. Uh, Doug, given, so given that we are where we are, um, are you okay with approving it, not approving it? I think uh, it, you're freezing up. I said, I don't know why, um, but my question was, given that we are where we are with the definition and the prior approvals, are you okay with approving it? Yes. Okay. So if we could have a draft resolution prepared um, that, so the tentative poll was that at least three of us would vote for it. Um, if, I, don't, I wasn't quite sure, Greta, what you wanted to do, but um, there's at least three, so that's the majority. So if you could have a res, if we, someone, so um, William, is this something that you could do? Could draft up the resolution for us? I don't know who's going to be drafting the resolutions in the future. What we've done in the past is most resolutions were dra drafted by Betty Ann or drafted by the village, unless there was something particularly complex about them, in which case we had council draft them. But I don't think this is a particularly complex one. It's certainly more or less exactly the same as prior resolutions. So is this something that you could draft up, William? I, I don't know. I'm asking. Well, I'm, I would say not at this point, but considering number one, that I'm new, and uh, number two, uh, with, Betty, with Betty Ann leaving, it just leaves one staff person managing all boards. So I would ask that the, um, the board attorney draft a resolution. Okay, so I guess that's going to be Michael. That's going to be you, I think, since Christy, this is her last meeting. So if you would essentially take a look at the last resolution drafted and draft one pretty much based on that. Um, then I think we'd be and, good. And I should make the point that there were no complaints in this period that were reported. Um, and that is, is part of the reason that we're having the yeah. renewal, but we did consider that. I okay. can share the previously adopted resolutions if that's of help, of assistance. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, it would just follow the same format probably. Perfect. Definitely. So that's fine. Let him, so then if you give him time, so if you would draft right. it up so that we have it you know, before the next, not the 13th meeting, but the 10th, September meeting. 10th. Okay, now the last one we have is, and again, we don't have to vote on it, you know, we can vote, not vote, have a draft resolution, is uh, 3A2020, Pamela and Alexander Horn for 401 Rushmore. Um, anybody want to? I'm, I'm ready. And if you're to, not ready to vote, we don't have to vote today. Yeah, I'm ready to move forward with it and to approve it. Um, I do think that a lot of it is about the configuration of the lot line. Um, it is a small portion that actually is, 
you know, interferes. So I don't have a problem with this, um, this variance. Okay, Doug or Greta or Abby, what are your thoughts? I don't, I don't have an issue with it at all. Abby? You're on you mute, so we can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry, no problems. Um, Greta? Um, yes, I would vote for it. Um, I do think it's substantial, but, um, you know, I, 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 balancing all the factors, I think um, I would, I would um, vote for, you know, and especially there's precedent given um, the neighbor across the street. Okay, well, given that we have to make the findings, so um, if, again, Michael, if you would draft up this resolution. Um, and so, um, since it's a variance, so just going through the findings, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood. No undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood. The other, there are other buildings on there are other houses in this area that also have narrow um, side lot lines. Um, and side yards, side yards. Uh, sorry, yards, sorry. You're right, have, have also yard. have, have yep. narrow side yards. And um, so while this is, this is making a very narrow side yard, it really isn't gonna change the character in the neighborhood. Whether the benefits sought can be achieved by some other feasible method, we do not, there is no other feasible method because the only way to do it otherwise is really to reconfigure the entire house to put it on the other side, whether the request area variance is substantial. It is, I think, and I agree, it is substantial to the extent that they're reducing the side yard from the requirement of 15 feet to nine feet, five inches, but the increase from the existing condition is small and given the amount of, well, no, because the entire area that that's very, so, but I guess we really, and given the amount of increase it is a relatively, it's only 12 feet of increase in the nonconformity. Um, I don't think it is under those. Does that work with that finding? Um, it is not, it, it is a substantial narrowing of the side yard, but given the existing nonconformity and given the fact that it only extends for 12 foot increase in nonconformity, um, it isn't, it, it's not, um, it isn't so substantial that we would deny it. Will it have an adverse effect or impact on the physical or environmental conditions? Um, no, there was no, no, it won't. And whether it was self-created and um, it, was self, it wasn't self-created because it was a pre-existing lot, but everything is always self-created because they're enlarging it. So um, if, that, if you have that, Michael, does that work for everyone more or less? Anything else you want to add? Oh, sounds good. All right. Can we take a straw poll? poll or we just, we, oh, yeah, take a straw poll. Meg? Yes. I vote yes. Doug? Yes. Greta? Yeah. Abby? Okay, I think that was a yes. She's on mute again. She's um, muted again. <laughs> sorry, yes. Okay, so I think that's it. Was there anything else that we needed to do tonight? I don't think so. Uh, hey, hey, Robin, can I just suggest really quickly, since we have this August 13th meeting now coming up, that maybe we could put 600 Lorraine Street on that, or Lorraine Street, excuse me, it's late on that agenda as well, since that also very similarly is just um, needing that additional to family um, variants from the building department so they don't get hold up, held up by two months as well. I'm sorry, which one are we putting there? 600 Lorraine Street. I don't think we can we put 600 Lorraine Street on it. Um, that is, they need a, um, that's a complete, I mean, they're gonna have to complete public hearing. That's been an application that was tonight. It wasn't, um, I guess we could have, I mean, we could have anything on the agenda. We could have a full meeting. So I guess we could put 600 Lorraine Street on, but the, I don't know that the, you know, the reason we were asking the building inspector, but they've got to remember, they've still got to, we're not, they've still got to comply with the, yeah. you know, since it, with, I mean, in order for the, it to make the 13th, Frank has to make his determination tomorrow. 
essentially, or the next, right, really soon. And we were asking him to do that specially. Um, I don't know when he'd have to make the determination by for the for the for um, the, for for 600 Lorraine Street. But if it, he can do it, and if they can do all the notice and everything else in time, I suppose I'm fine with it. It just seems like a lot to ask them to wait like two extra months now because they need this extra, you know, two family, um, you know, approval variance, right? So. Hey, again, I don't have a problem with it if Frank gets to it. So why don't we wait and see whether he has- Isn't to... it just amending the application? No, they ha he has to issue an objection. It's a use. It's an, uh, he has to add a new variance needed. And they have to address that in, in, in the application. And we have to have evidence that it is a non-conforming use. We know nothing about it. We don't know when it was built. He's got to look into all of that. I mean, maybe it was, maybe it was built when it was in fact illegal to build a two family here. We don't know that. Yeah. So he's yeah. got to make all that determinations. We're assuming that it's legal, a legal two family, but but you know, somebody raised, I can't remember if it was Meg or Greta, I think raised the question about parking. Um, and so, it, you know, if when they built the house, they were supposed to have more parking spaces than one parking space, and maybe they originally had it and they paved over. I don't mean them, I mean some uh, prior no, I, I, Yeah, I mean, there's a specific criteria to determine the parking requirements over in there. Um, but but he's got to go back to when, when was the house built? What was the zoning in effect at the time the house was built? And if, assuming that it was two family was legal at the time the well, house was built. If they're going to modify it, it's going to be today. It's going to be, you know, the, the bigger issue that they're going to have is if they're going to modify it, like they're under 2020. Right or wrong? What? Uh, no. Right? They would do uh, it the 2020 I don't code. They're oh. under 2020, right? Yes. Yeah, okay. So, I mean, it, it's going to take a bit with Frank on the 2020 code to get to get in there. But uh, the parking, if I'm not mistaken, it's one per bedroom. And then... But it's again... Uh, no, that's for, that's for multi-residential. It's, it's four for a two-family. It's two yeah. per dwelling unit. It's two per dwelling unit. Okay, so they need four spaces unless it was a pre-existing non-conforming. If when they built the house, a two-family was legal and a two-family only needed one parking space, then it's fine. Yeah. Because they're well, not expecting yeah. that. So well, we, just, we don't know what, we don't know when the house was built. Right, Frank has to go back and look into all that. So I guess the answer, Abby, is if he can get it done, it's okay to have it on the hearing. I don't know if he can get it done. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So if he can get it done, I'm fine with having that. Yeah, I would like to try and get it on there. I, you know. That's fine. Uh, let okay. me ask the board something else then. Um, I mean, I was thinking we'd have a really short meeting, but as we're adding more things, it's going to get a little longer. Since we never seem to get to the whole application issue, do you want to take it up on the 13th or not? No. <laughs> oh, yeah. no. Madam, Chair, Madam Chair, if I can speak to that. So let, let me, let, so. As you know, the planning department is essentially one year old. It, it, it's a new department relatively. And uh, with that being the case, <clears throat> it is, it's incumbent upon the planning department and planning staff to create um, um, an update and update your application. What the board is responsible for is updating its uh, rules and procedures and planning staff can assist you with that. And then once you have updated rules and procedures, then planning staff can create a, an application based off that. So that's what the board should be focusing its attention is updating its rules and procedures. The, the board does not have any written rules of procedure. Well, then that, that's something that staff can help you with. So if you, if you think we need to have rules of, don't we need an application first before we do rules of procedure? Because unless we know what the application looks like, we can't develop procedures in accordance with that application. It's very hard to develop a rule of procedure without an application form to know what we're doing. Not necessarily. That's why it's planning staff's responsibility to update your rules and procedures and provide you with something to look at and provide your insight. It's oh, 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 wait, we, wait, wait, wait. I think, I, I think we need the application form first. And based on what the application is, we develop rules of procedure. We can't develop rules of procedure without knowing what it is um, 
that we are telling, or are you saying that the appropriate way to do this is to, for the board to first develop rules of procedure and then based on the rules of procedure, you will come up with an application for it? Absolutely, and it's planning staff's job to give you rules, and, to draft rules and procedures for you to take a look at. It is not for the board to do, it's for staff to come up with it and provide it to you for your input. Well, I'm fine so with having have, staff yes. do that. It has not, um, it has not offered to do that up until now. Um, so I'm fine with having the staff draft something for us to look at. It's certainly a wonderful idea. We would appreciate that. Um, and if when we get the rules of procedure, we think we need the application, we'll let you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's fine. That I, I assume everyone's okay with having them draft it um, and then looking at it. And the only other thing, Madam Chair, uh, just a really, really quick point. I think that one thing that I, I would think that would help move your meetings along just a little quicker is if you were to vote on items that you want to vote on, as opposed to going through everything and then trying to go back, because then you have to remember everything that you talked about, you know, before you, uh, when you had the matter, you know, in front of you. Uh, we, we've gone through this before. We've done both ways. If this is what we have determined. When we, meetings are not so long, we vote on applications that day. When meetings get to be very long or applications are very complex and there were multiple hearings, we often have to go back because we need to review the application before. So um, that's how we do it this way. And as you see, those applications that were simple enough to be voted on today, we voted on. Those no, applications I'm saying, all I'm saying is that the items that were simple when you got to it, when it was called, to vote then. To vote Instead at that time, eight. as opposed okay. to- Okay, the answer to that is we used to do it that way. Yes. We used to do it that way. Board members were concerned that the resolution as drafted didn't adequately reflect what in fact they said, and therefore we have gone to this way. If, um, if the new planning staff, once, we, once you've gotten more familiar with it, you know, been here a while, if the new planning staff is comfortable with drafting resolutions, um, that ad accurately reflect exactly what we've said, then we're fine, I think, with having that. But at the moment, I think we're going to continue to do it this way. I think he, excuse me, I don't think that's what he's saying. Close application that we vote right then. Yeah. Like, don't go through all the applications and do all the voting at the end, but yeah. pause and say, hey, do we want to vote on this now, as soon as we close the application? Oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood what you were saying. Yes, um, that's right. And I agree with that. I think that would be a lot more effective. It's just only our, there is the public and people waiting to talk about the reviews. Are we slowing it up for them rather than going through everything so the people who want to participate don't have to wait so long? That's all. I mean, that's, I think, one, reason, one advantage of doing it our way. I mean, it's sure, if you have an application like, let's take um, corn, the, the, um, the 401 Rushmore Avenue application. That was very straightforward and not a lot of discussion. If we had a more complicated application, um, let's take Capetta, right? 170. That would have taken, it's taken us two meetings to discuss. And we probably spent two hours discussing the resolution. So I think it works on the simple ones. It doesn't work on the complicated ones. But we could try doing it for the simple ones that we don't think there are any issues. And maybe after, you know, it, it, sometimes we know it's gonna be simple. So we could try doing that for the simple applications. I'm okay with that. So we could try that at the next meeting for the simple applications. All right, that's all, that's all I have, Madam Chair. All right, we could try that. Okay, I think we are done, um, right? Let us, uh, so the meeting is, so we're um, moving to adjourn the meeting. Is there a motion? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Wait a minute, Abby, have a nice vacation. Betty Ann, Betty Ann. Okay. We'll see Betty Ann in August. What? I, take I'll care, Betty you. Ann. Aww. Okay, I'll, I'll second to adjourn the meeting. Okay, see you on the 13th. Everybody agree, say yes. yes. Take yourself off mute, yes. 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 yes, okay, the meeting is adjourned. Okay, bye. Thank you. Bye.